TikTok, time to rock. Good rock. evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. Now, AP said that last time our audio levels were uneven. So, yeah. Nita, let's get a quick sound check here. We sounded even? Go ahead, g g give us a check, AP. Give us a check. Check, 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 how's that is everyone sounding all right good we always have to do that right we got to do it <laughs> we got to do it man if we get vocab on here with us he can uh he can freestyle he can freestyle to our uh to our dope beat that'd be awesome i can too i'm a secret rapper nobody knows that but i'm a, I'm a very i'm a secret rapper you got dope rhymes hey yeah. hey secret. we should we should uh we should do some rap raps about the uh the holes in the narrative. We should we should. I was thinking about that. Hindu historian says hi. Hi Hindu historian. Hindu historian, hello. Hello All right. to you. Everyone says uh yep. Everyone's saying the sound is good. All right. Captain Christianity says sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so so guys, have you uh <laughs> have you been follow have been following the uh the fallout which fallout i'm talking everyone out there everything oh. what what hasn't been a total total fallout or backlash for uh for everyone who's coming at us right now let's explain let's explain it okay let's so what happens yeah we gotta we gotta we gotta <laughs> capturing christianity yeah I, I just saw the comment that you you read and i scrolled down until i found it hey, greetings uh, to capturing christianity by the way Capturing, like capturing Christianity? Why have you not condemned David Wood? <laughs> what? You had him on your program and, and actually asked him questions about his methodology? How dare you? <laughs> You're finished! You're finished, boy! You're <laughs> finished, boy. <laughs> boy. I wasn't even I wasn't even planning on doing that right now. I wasn't even <laughs> planning on going to the oh, 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 oh. But it just it's it's just yeah. It just, anyway. it just comes out, man. All right, so I, I guess we have to go. But what what set all of this off, AP? What 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 got all this started? Because things, uh, everything's just been escalating. Well, I guess it first started with the holes in the narrative. Yeah. Right. Yep. It was first with uh, in an interview with Yasser Kadi, Mohammed Hijab came together and asked him certain questions about a uh, topic about some leaked emails and some conversations that uh, Yasser Kadi had, and it was about uh, whether Yasser Kadi can further elaborate what his uh, what his problems with the with the preservation of the Quran. Are and Yasser Kadi refused to 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 speak publicly about it at first, but then when he was pushed further, he started talking about it, and it became a disaster mm -hmm. because he basically revealed that uh, when you get your Islamic education, you learn certain things about the preservation of the Quran, and it becomes all very confusing. But you just learn to learn and to repeat what you have, uh, what, what 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 people give you during that education. Mm -hmm. But then when you go deeper into it, you you start to understand that it doesn't really make sense, and that there are, are holes in the standard narrative. Holes of, in the narrative. Holes in the narrative. Hey, that could be that. That could be uh That could be part of our beat, right? Yeah. Like, like, check it out. Check it out. Like, 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 you got the the, you got. Holes in the narrative. 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 <laughs> narrative. Right. Someone and then, cut and this then, up. Oh, hey, hey, hang on. Look. <laughs> hey hijab <laughs> hey hijab here's your christmas gift <laughs> capturing christianity says i condemn david wood there you go you can stop whining that, <laughs> that you can stop whining hijab that that not enough christians are condemning me <laughs> you capturing have. christianity condemned david wood wow <laughs> it'll be it'll be on it'll be on hijab's twitter feed tomorrow oh finally finally the christians are condemning him oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. now i've got now i've got him <laughs> you, have to, you have to explain why you are condemning david wood though oh well yeah, all right yeah. to, uh, all right go ahead and continue so we had the holes in the narrative now now so 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 we had the holes in the narrative yasser Kadi admits 
Uh, guys, I know this standard narrative that we've all been passing around, it doesn't really work. There are holes in the narrative, and actually, it cannot stand up to scrutiny. When we try to present this narrative to Western academics, they destroy us, and we know they're right. Direct quote from him. We know they're right because they're quoting our sources to us. And so his entire thing was, it, it, it's basically as, as Muslims... He's saying, as Muslims, we don't push we don't push hard enough, and we just accept easy answers that make us feel good about our religion. And other people aren't like that, and they just say it's not true. And then we 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 know they're right. And so that was uh that was in that interview. Hijab caught a quick backlash, and he chopped the end off. <laughs> he chopped thirty yeah. minutes of the interview off to cover that up. Yasser Qadi kept it up for a while. Then he deleted the entire interview. Well, first he he took down comments. First he deleted comments because Muslims were in there saying you're just you know you're destroying my confidence in the Quran with this stuff. Uh -huh. Then he uh, took down the entire interview, and that should have been the end of it, but that wasn't. So how did that connect to anything else that's been going on? Well, uh, after after he took that down, of course, people started. Uh... People started speaking about it uh, even even more and putting it out there and uh, you know pointing out that 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 Yasakari basically ended Islam <laughs> or that he basically destroyed Islam and that Muhammad Hijab was uh, the the primary purpose the primary uh, actor with it who mm -hmm. caused all of this because he invited Yasakari and he made this whole interview possible which was a disaster which both of them have eventually deleted from their channels. Uh, I don't know what um, what happened exactly after that, but uh, I was I, w I wasn't entirely there. But at some point, I said, "Hey, this is a perfect time, Mohammed Hijab. You asked me for for a debate before. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you. Uh, I would like I would like to challenge you for now for uh, to a debate because you have been very uh, very very." You have, you, you, you have bragged a lot about how you would finish me and how would how, how I would uh, I quote uh, get close to. I don't know, crapping myself or something like that in front of him. So I thought, okay, well, come on, Mommy the job. I'm challenging you to an online debate. Let's have an online debate on the question whether Islam is the truth. And then Mohammed Hijab was like, first he ignored it, he ignored it, and then uh, I said, look, he's ignoring it because he's a coward, because that's what that's that's what he does, right? He challenges people to, to debates, and when they uh, reject or ignore, he calls them cowards. So I said, look, Mohammed Hijab is a coward. He, he obviously doesn't want to debate the topic of Islam itself with me. He always goes after other people or goes after other people's beliefs. Uh, eventually, he came and said uh, that he wouldn't debate me because he's too good for me. And uh, then he said he would only debate me if he's allowed to personally insult me. And I said, OK, fine, grant it. Mm -hmm. I would normally never do this, but grant it here. You can do it. You are allowed to personally insult me during the debate. Fine. I compromise. Let's do it. Let's do the online debate. Good compromise. Then he he started finding different excuses like, okay, we need to. I need to be able to film it. I need to do it here and there. Eventually, his own fans pressed him to to do it, and eventually he said, okay, fine, I accept this. I accept the debate challenge. And as I announced it and said, wonderful, Mohammed Hijab and I are going to have a debate. He then suddenly said, uh, I specified we are going to have an online debate. He said he then suddenly said that I was trying to squeeze in a different condition that wasn't specified before, which means that I am actually a coward because I don't want to debate him in person in London, uh, which means I'm a coward. And immediately he started telling me stuff like, uh, I think you should commit suicide mm -hmm. and things like that. And uh, the funny thing is he even convinced his fans that he did indeed not know that this was an online debate, but afterwards, just a few days later, he publicly admitted that he knew it was an online debate, mm. but that he basically tricked me and that I shouldn't have trusted him because he's my opponent, mm. and that he would only debate me if I, uh, if he, if I, if he buys me a ticket and I fly to London and debate him in person. And I asked him why, and you know what he said when I asked him why? He said that uh, I could even show that comment here, but he said that. Uh, that he needs to debate in front of an audience because uh, showmanship, you know, mm -hmm. playing to his audience is a big part of his debate and he doesn't want to disable himself for me. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and that is actually, this is actually one of the main reasons why I didn't want to have, a, have an in-person debate with him, but with an online debate, because I know that that's what he does. 
he doesn't trust the the information that he presents. He trusts the interaction with his gullible people that he that he presents. Mm -hmm. And um, um, what's interesting is is if you look at how hijab wants to use an argument, hijab has figured out. And you could kind of see this from like Ahmed Didad and Zakir Naik that they can be saying the stupidest things in the world and the audience will just cheer itself into a frenzy where they're cheering for anything you say. So much so that hijab could even agree with what I said and completely destroy this idea that Islam is pure monotheism and they would still cheer as long as he yeah. sounded really confident, right? This is a man who stood there and said, Allah <laughs> prays for Muhammad, not to Muhammad, and the crowd burst into cheers. Yay, our God prays. Our, that, he could have said anything and they would have cheered. So he could have stood up there and goes, bibbidi bobbidi, hello bobbidi bobbidi, that's the refutation. And they would have cheered like Ooh, mad, right? Uh, yeah. It's, Allahu it, Akbar. It, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> oh, so brilliant, right? So basically, Hijab has, has re, he, he understands how to take advantage of his audience. He understands the crowd that he's working with and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to live without that crowd one he doesn't want to live without that crowd and two he does not want to engage without some level of deception being involved i have not i've not seen this guy engage with anyone where where deception was not involved uh in the in the debate process so it is a major thing that he does. Uh, deception is, is, is one of his major tactics, mm -hmm. and he I, I can I can show that. I, I still want to. I'm still preparing a huge video in which I will show the whole story from the beginning to the end, and including uh, our debate and what happened there, and uh, how he basically destroyed himself through that debate too. But uh, in in our back and forth messaging, he even he he, he basically told me that I shouldn't have trusted him. I, I, that's what he said to me. He said, "I am your opponent, or I'm I'm your adversary." You shouldn't have uh, trusted me. You should have sent me a, a contract with all the details. You know, that, that's what he basically told me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, after that happened, he got very angry because I called him a coward before. And he started making tweets about how I should commit suicide. Then he deleted that. Then the following day, he claimed that that was just... Uh, to test my morals because there's apparently nothing wrong according to my world we've just committed suicide that same day he got so outraged that he joined our live stream at night uh and and gave us very strange sexual that was the infamous golden showers <laughs> debacle they, he told us that we should uh, give each other a golden shower, get on our knees, and yeah. uh, be be a gimp and all that stuff. People are still that, when, I, when I mention when I mention this stuff in videos, I still get what is that? What is that? And then I get oh, I just looked it up. Oh, nasty, right? Like he's this <laughs> he's this expert. He's this expert in you know bondage and fetish porn, and he's using all this stuff. Which I mean, just think about it. If if a job had been a good Muslim hanging out in the mosque and spending his time reading his Quran. Where, where, where's his head getting filled with this stuff? This is, this is some sick stuff. Anyway. I have to tell you something. Uh, I, I will just go into this uh, briefly right now. I will go even further into this uh, in my own work that I'm preparing about him. I'm, I'm taking my sweet time right now. Uh, and I'm only doing this because he resorted to personally attacking and harassing people directly, which is why I want to dig a little bit into his mind. But uh, Mohammed Hijab projects a lot. He does he does this a lot. Like he has a problem. It's very obvious, and he projects that in such a in such an obvious way onto others. And you realize that uh, he's actually talking about a problem that he himself has. For example, he told me that day that. Um, he thinks that I am a deeply disturbed person who has, uh, who deals with addictions and uh, a lack of self confidence and stuff like that. And I thought that's very weird because that's exactly what I thought about you. And uh, so, I, so no, I went to, no, you, you you don't know how true that is. Um, that I mean, we we could talk about the personality type. I've seen people like Muhammad Hijab before. Uh, I've run into them in prison, and the the. To, the most I can, the most I can tell, is they're psychologically. This is my interpretation. Psychologically, they're beta males, but they're mm -hmm. big, strong dudes, and so people have been sort of treating them like they're the they're the strong leader their entire lives, 
And so they they have this kind of double life where ah me me strong ah, me 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 strong. Whereas if you push on them just a little bit, they immediately start breaking, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and if you think about hijab, right? Someone who's really tough and confident in his abilities doesn't need to go around trying to yep. trick people into getting an advantage. You don't need to do that, right? A, a, a real confident man walk in there and say, all right, what do you guys got? What do you got, right? Hijab, oh, what can I do? Hey, can you get him to agree to this? Can you get him to agree to all these rules that I will then break because I don't have to follow them? Oh, hey, guys, can you trick him into coming on, making making uh, the apostate prophet think it's just a discussion, and then I come in here, ha-ha! Can we do that, right? A, a really confident individual does not need to do that, right? Someone who's deeply insecure needs to do that. And you and the the the, the uh, also along those lines is notice... He'll be talking trash. Oh, I will destroy you all. Oh, I'll take everyone on. And as soon as you, okay, let's go. It's, oh, will you condemn him? Oh, Patreon, will, <laughs> will you come to my rescue? YouTube, will you come to my, will anyone help me? Right? Notice, as soon as, as soon as you, as soon as you call him, on his aggressive nature, he immediately starts looking for someone to help him and rescue him. Right? What, who is that? That's someone who psychologically psychologically wants to have a a protector a stronger person who's helping him and he's supposed to be second he's supposed to be carrying out orders that's how he is psychologically but he's treated he's been treated because he's six foot six and a giant he's been treated like he's he's in charge he's the strong one he's the man and so he again he has this kind of double life and it's uh it results in this kind of uh outward aggression but inward insecurity and you you immediately start start noticing that as soon as you start uh as soon as you start poking him so i i don't know if there's a name for people like this you might call them uh like big boy betas or something like that the the the, the who have the beta the beta male psychology but who you know are, are big and strong and so everyone thinks they're they're these really tough guys and so the result is he walks around oh i'll fight you i'll fight you oh <laughs> and as soon as you say <laughs> As soon as someone says, okay, let's go, oh, no, who's going to rescue me from this guy? Will, will you help me? Will you help me? No one's helping me. I don't know what to do now. Wow. I, I, I think I have already shared what I think about him, what I think he has uh, personality-wise. But uh, I am pretty sure uh, that he has, that, that, that he's a, a narcissist in the realist sense. So that, that he's actually a narcissist, that he has a narcissistic personality disorder which uh, is something that is quite common actually in society and that is often that often doesn't need treatment or that of people often don't see treatment for but with him it is so problematic he has such deep insecurity issues such deep inferiority issues that um, it only takes very little effort to provoke him into doing extremely stupid things and uh, you know you, you just tell him something with me for example it was this like he is trying to bully everybody right and he's trying to make everybody complain and trying to make everybody uh, silent but I just didn't react I was just I was just responding to him like I was just quite calm at responding to him to his mockery I was mocking him back bullying him back basically and uh, the, the more I was doing that the more he was getting angry and he was eventually losing it and started saying incredibly dumb stuff to me that that by the way is getting him into trouble right now and um and, and, the, and the following day he said that he didn't he doesn't say those things because he's impulsive he just says those things because he wants to test us but just a few days later he actually made a tweet in which he explained that he ha has a that he's very wild tempered and he can sometimes say impulsive things and then he actually admitted that that many of those things that he said to us were mm -hmm. quite impulsive and yeah. that he said them because of a because he was provoked because as a, as a as a reaction because he's so insecure he feels so easily provoked by us asserting that he's actually a little uh idiot that he immediately tries to go out there to prove the opposite Mm -hmm. And does and and does and says terrible things in the in, in the pursuit of proving that he's actually very strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and notice notice uh, notice what you, what you pointed out um, when he's just blurting things out because he's a hothead, right? Uh -huh. Because he has a temperament where he can't stand any sort of challenge to him, right? Because he's deeply, deeply insecure, right? On, on the you know. In his mind, he can't he can't stand any sort of challenge. Um, he just breaks uh, he just breaks apart. He's very very fragile. So when you when you know when you start you know poking him, 
uh, he, you know, he, he breaks down, he starts flipping out and he, he loses his temper. But then he has to justify that because people are going, whoa, you're talking about golden showers and committing suicide? What's, what's wrong with you? And then, oh, but here's the reason I must do that. Here's the reason I had to do that. There's no reason you did it because you're an insecure hothead who can't control, who has no self-control, right? But then when, if that's going to be used against him, hey, look at you, you're embarrassing us because you're a hothead and oh, now you're saying you've got a reason for it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, okay, now I'm an embarrassment. Okay, guys, I, uh, I was just wrong. I was just wrong. And so, yeah, the 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 dude definitely has some some issues. And for, for, for me, the, the, main, the main interesting point is that he's popular, right? That's the that's the issue. If 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 because people say why why are you why are you paying any attention to this guy? Why are you paying any attention to this guy at all? Because he's popular. If he were just some random dude on the street, we would not be paying we would not be paying attention to him. This is a guy who's trying to influence the next generation of Muslims, and this is a really 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 weird dude. And he's revealing he's revealing some interesting things about and I've seen, Islam. I've seen Muslim apologists who are uh, more mature than he is, you know, but who, who are not more, who are not less extreme, I would say, but who are more mature than he is and who wouldn't do the stupid things that he does. Everyone's more mature Ca than him, yeah. <laughs> well, I've seen Muslim apologists or Muslim scholars come out and implicitly uh, talk about him and his actions or implicitly talk about uh, the current dawah toxicity that is going on. And uh, quite influential people, too. And these people say these things, but they don't have any impact mm -hmm. because those young and dumb people still attach themselves to Mohammed Tijab and still roll with him no matter what he does. And even if he says completely ridiculous and even wrong things, even if he th says things that clearly go against Islam, that clearly go against the the, uh, the 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 jurisprudence of Islam, the consensus of Islamic history regarding legal rulings, even if he contradicts them and thereby violates the fundamentalist's code that they are all supposed to stick by, they still don't shut him out because because they like it. You know, they like how he's how he's loud and how he uh, you know how how he just insults people and attacks people because that is their value because they have they cannot convince the world i mean they have been trying it forever and they cannot convince anybody islam doesn't convince anybody muslim apologists can't convince anybody nobody out there listens to these muslim apologists and thinks oh yeah this is so beautiful that makes so much sense that is also so rational I've, i will believe in that now it doesn't convince anybody so what they need to resort to is to insult people instead to personally attack them in, instead to mm -hmm. humiliate them and that's where muhammad hijab comes in he feels that role he becomes the leader of that of exactly that of that toxic personality that they all desire and that's why they support him no matter what he does yeah and uh th that's something i noticed uh I've, we've pointed this out multiple times that's something i noticed a long time ago you have you have the the really uh, nice peaceful um muslims like nabil and his family were and so on and uh but you have this this aggressive uh, group as well and they're looking for they're looking for a different kind of champion right like the yeah. the the nice calm muslims they're looking for someone like shabir ali to represent them and so on but there's all there are also massive numbers who are looking for you know me, me strong me hijab <laughs> right and so why didn't why didn't these muslims have their repres have their popular representative um and it's because the organizations the the Muslim organizations didn't put these guys forward, right? Whereas now these guys can become popular because of the internet, right? People like Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and these guys can become popular because of the internet. And then if they become popular enough, well, the organizations want to, you know, want to work with these guys because of their popularity and yeah, stuff. And yeah. so you're seeing the rise of actual avatars of Islam. And so pretty cool stuff. And these are really, really awesome times to be in um so yeah, cool. as far as the most recent let, let, let's get up to date here so we had the golden shower stuff he started talking about that then he started flipping out on y you and your wife which is which is oh, yeah. all, which yeah. is which is always interesting to me because i mean they call me the world's most infamous islamophobe and they clearly clearly don't like me and yet 
anytime they have a choice of going after me or you, they go after you. And so I think it's I think there is that added element of you being an ex Muslim that enrages them even more because um yeah, they tend to they tended to go after you more. So Hijab posted a, a nasty picture. Um I mean he posted a picture with a nasty comment um of multiple wives. One of them was of my wife. Um, he posted uh, pictures of who was it? Abdullah Samir, you. Abdullah Samir, Abdullah Gandal. He mentioned Harris Sultan, who doesn't. I think who is not married because, mm -hmm. so he he got away. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Abdullah Gandal, Abdullah Samir, uh, me, and to you basically with mm -hmm. our wives. He also said something about Tommy Robinson for some reason, but uh, he, he he then like didn't pursue further on it because. That guy is not in the spotlight anymore. Mm -hmm. But what actually happened is that he, uh, he didn't attack my wife first. He actually uh, first tried to attack me when his whole uh, when his whole deal with me got even worse, and he failed to and and he appeared like a coward to, to the public. He attacked me, and then um, when others came out in my defense and pointed out how disgusting he is. Uh, including Abdullah Samir and Abdullah Kondal, he started going against them and going into their profiles and going against their wives. Since my wife, uh, since I don't usually share very much uh, photos or anything about my personal life, he first didn't get to me. When I saw that he's uh, attacking them personally all the time, I jumped in and said, hey, you have been attacking these people's private lives for several days now. Are you okay? It seems like you have serious problems. And uh, after I said that, he then started digging into my profile and my relationships, and then he started, he found my wife, and then he started attacking her, directly making uh, veiled rape threats and rape implications. Uh, in the middle of it, he also mentioned your wife, mm -hmm. and that's, that's how it went. It went very crazy. We talked about it. He exaggerated even more, and he made an incitement to targeted harassment. And eventually, it almost looked like it was going to stop because he posted about how he has been very wild recently and not everything that he did was good. But he didn't actually apologize and he actually justified what he did. But then what happened is that uh, these these two guys, Adam Saleh and Slim, who are these... Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say it, but who are these popular Muslim uh, YouTubers? Uh, they invited me one day because, wait, wait, wait. I actually made a video to the, uh, uh, directed at Adam Saleh once and said, hey, you're associating with the wrong people. You know, the people that you're associating with, like Ada, like uh, Ali Dawa and Mohamed Hijab and uh, Dawa men believe in things that you probably don't approve of, like killing people over their beliefs. Adam Saleh, they made a response video and said, hey, we all believe in the same things, implying that he's actually okay with that. Then... Mm -hmm. Abdan Ali Dawa made a response video and, and explicitly said that he supports capital punishment for me and apostates like me who are little weaklings and cause corruption in society. And he said, and you know what? We will be watching and we are proud of that. So he, he said, we will be watching. You know, he's not talking about a hypothetical situation. He's talking about the Islamic State that he would like to see in the future or that he should see in his lifetime. And... Um, I invited myself on Adam Saleh's podcast, but uh, they rejected me first because they even said explicitly that they don't want me to influence their viewers and point out the bad in Islam and manipulate them into thinking my ways. And that was so pathetic. I, I, I made that public on Twitter. Afterwards, they suddenly one day contacted me, said, hey, do you want to come on our podcast uh, <laughs> within one hour? And I was like, OK, sure. Yeah. So that uh, was uh, get ready. Slim. Adam. This is Muhammad Hijab. Huh? I have a plot. Allah's the best of plotters. <laughs> invite him. Yes, invite him on. But then, hey, I come out after 10 minutes. Ha ha! It's me, Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> me strong. Funny. So they invited me. I joined them. I, th I was thinking, I was thinking, why did they, these people invite me right now? Do they feel embarrassed or do they have a plan? I thought they probably have a plan. They would probably bring up somebody. It will probably be Ali Dawa. And I will say, I'm not going to talk to you. Uh, goodbye. Have a good day. Is what I thought. I didn't think Muhammad Hijab would actually join the conversation and try to trick me into a conversation because I thought Muhammad Hijab is above that. And I thought the Muhammad Hijab who says, I will not have an online debate with you would not do that because how, how does that make him look? 
But then I go there and suddenly nine minutes later after, uh, into the conversation, Mohammed Hijab appears. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I said, I'm, I'm not going to talk to Mohammed Hijab. I'm not going to talk to him. He has insulted my wife. He has threatened my family. He has supported these things. He's insulting other people's wives. He's insulting other people's, he's harassing people. Uh, I'm not going to talk to him. You know, he can have, I offered him a debate. And for 20 or 30 minutes, I kept saying, hey, if you want to have a debate with me, have a debate with me. I'm not going to talk to you. But eventually, I started talking to him. We talked about uh, the death penalty. He went against Islamic rulings in that. Yeah, he I, just I, uh, very dirty. I didn't. Uh, I haven't watched the exchange. I clicked on it. Um, I saw um, Adam and Slim. They were basically asking you why you ripped up the Quran, but they kept interrupting. Oh, that's and I'd seen other I'd seen other people comment saying, uh, "Why can't Why can't they let him finish an answer without interrupting?" And oh, yeah. then I sort of scrolled through to see where Muhammad Hijab came in, and then I was like, oh, "This is, you know, just looking at the comments. Wait a minute. So this is Hijab being Hijab. Um, always has to always has to, you know, have some level of deception in there, but." Yeah. So the, as far as comments that I saw after that, I saw I saw people it, were, were from Muslims saying this guy doesn't know what he's talking about on the issue of, of apostasy. Mm -hmm. And it was I think it was from uh, what's that guy's name? Daniel. Kik what is it? Kik is it Kikachu? Daniel Hakikachu. Yeah. Hakikachu. Uh, yeah. Daniel Hakikachu. I think uh, someone asked him, said, hey, is this a correct view? And, uh, and he just said no. <laughs> and so. But yet he didn't openly. Uh, talk about it. He would have normally talked about it if a different uh, Muslim apologist or scholar said something that goes against Islamic rulings, but he didn't openly say anything about it except saying no when it was Muhammad Hijab that openly went against uh, Islamic rulings. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to they don't want to have a disagreement with Muhammad Hijab, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so the, the, the Quran ripping was there. They, they were basically trying to take advantage of the fact that I ripped the Quran apart, and they were trying to, you know, use that to make me initially look bad. To 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 what's what's it called? To mud the puddle? Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, muddy the uh, water. Yeah, yeah, muddy the water. Uh, to yeah, you you also have the, the poison the well. Yeah, poison the well. Whatever mm -hmm. they wanted to poison the well. Yeah. Uh, they just took advantage of that situation. I ripped apart the Quran. They started with that to make me look very terrible to Muslims, mm -hmm. not let me speak about why I did that ever, and then move on and bring Muhammad Hijab in, not let me speak about things. Uh, I, I didn't even want to speak about things. I didn't even want to debate. So I just threw, the, threw some questions at him, laughed. Uh, I still uh, reiterated that I want that I, that he should have a debate with me, and he refused to have a debate with me. And I asked him uh, if you don't want to have a debate with me because I'm so low, then why are you here talking to me and plotting against me for so long? So that's all. The, all that's all that happened. Afterwards, he went crazy. He wants to he wants to report us to Patreon. Yeah. So that, that's and by the way, that's actually funny, right? Like, uh, you're finished. You're beneath me. Uh, you 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 you're. you're your careers have been destroyed by me, and yet they're all joining together. Patreon, can we get them banned? Like, <laughs> why would little idiots people whose careers are over and who are completely insignificant? Uh, I don't spend a lot of time focusing on them. I ignore them. I have to say, uh, somebody's asking if uh, my online debate invitation to Mohammed Hijab is still on the table. I have to say something, um, although he did very disgusting things and he talked about my wife and my family and about myself, just to show what kind of a dirty individual he is and what kind of a coward he is and how weak he is, yes, it is still on the table. I still think Mohammed Hijab <laughs> should take the opportunity and if he's so strong and if he trusts his beliefs so much, actually sit down and have an online debate with me about whether Islam is the truth, as I offered it to him two months ago, and we have been fighting over it for so long, and he has accepted it and rejected it. Do it. Why, why is that so hard? Why do you have to reject that and then come together with your dumb friends and make a plot against me to trick me into this conversation where you don't even bring anything convincing? Hey, hey, AP, <laughs> so the response will be, no, I will only face you if you come to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> and come face me face to face at Speaker's yeah. Corner. That's the only way. But then, like, probably a couple days from now, he'll call me and be like, 
Okay, if you agree not to tell him, since I know that you will keep your word, David, then you must have me over to your house. And when you're starting a random live stream with the apostate prophet, <laughs> I will jump out. Ha ha! I'm ready for our debate. Ha ha! It's got to be something. It is, it's got to be something like that, right? It is so dumb. These people actually. Um, when he came in, I reacted with anger. I was like, "I'm not going to talk to Mohammed Tijab." You know, that's what I said. I'm, I am not going to talk to Mohammed Tijab because he insulted my wife. I made him an offer. He rejected it. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. You know what those people said, including he himself. They made it look like I was scared of him when he came in into the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I was suddenly, I was afraid, I was terrified, I was scared of Mohammed Tijab because he came in. How does that make sense? I am here for one entire month telling him, you coward, let us do it right now. Let's have an <clears throat> online debate. Let's have no, a third party platform no, moderator. He, he was he was he was he was the same way uh, in a in a live stream with vocab after the uh, debate I had with him. Um, I pointed out that because, I mean, probably between a, a quarter and a third of the Muslim debaters I've faced, um, between a quarter and a third of the Muslim debaters I've faced, have used deception, have have ma- have demanded that we agree upon rules that they then broke and then mm-hmm. had no in- had clearly had no intention of following because they don't believe they have to follow any sort of rules and then so you don't want to agree to rules with with these people and yet they call you coward if you don't oh it's because you're scared oh um so i basically said that that the the debate that i was in prior to that was uh in philadelphia i believe or somewhere close to it and it was with robert spencer and me versus uh two muslims um same thing here's the list of these things that you have to agree to um they they broke them all and then gave themselves just additional time because the, the, the moderator was a, a Muslim. And so they just broke all the rules, gave themselves extra time. And Robert was, Robert wanted to get up and, and walk out or, or, uh-huh. inter- or interrupt it. And I said, no, just, look, man, just stay calm. Just stay calm. Wait till it's over. Then, you know, we could, we can make, you know, we can say it in a video afterwards. And then later on, I was like, no, why, why do I, why do I always let these guys get away with this stuff instead of, we should have walked out. When people say, why'd you walk out? It's because you broke the rules. Um, so anyway, so that was my thinking going into the hijab debate. And so I mentioned in a live stream, I say, once, once I realized he's breaking the rules, the moderator's not enforcing the rules. This was all a sham. It was all, Hey, let's get David to agree to these rules because he will, he will follow them no matter what we do. Whereas we get to then violate them. Um, I said, I, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to walk off stage. I planned multiple times. I'm just, I should just finish what I'm saying and then walk off and then walk off. And then, you know, maybe if they run up and say, okay, we're going to, a, we're going to honor our agreement now, then maybe I walk back and something like that. But of course the job takes the clip of me saying, oh, I, I wanted to walk out. You see, it's because he's scared. It's like, I have this disgusting behavior that everyone in the universe, except uh, me and my followers thinks is reprehensible. And when I behave like this, people just want to get away from me because I'm engaging in deception and, and just horrible, horrible behavior. And when you say, gosh, I do not want to be around you. You're a liar. You're, you're a horrible, horrible person. It's, a, oh, it's because you fear the power of Islam. What a, man, what an ideology, dude. What an ideology <laughs> that produces this. I don't know it anything is, else is that insane. produces it. No, it's, it's 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 unique. It is it is yep. unique. It is so uh, dumb. Uh, here's a here's a quick comment here, Michael Coyne. Michael Coyne says, "How is it that David is chilled, and he is or was a psychopath? I don't mean to be negative, and Muhammad Hijab is less controlled." Michael Coyne, different. I don't think you know what psychopaths are. <laughs> psychopaths <laughs> are very very calm. Um, you can, if you, you could do horrible things to a psychopath. He won't, uh, he won't lash back out. He will start plotting, right? Um, the, you might be thinking of sociopaths. Sociopaths tend to be hotheads and, and that's the classic f- phrase. Um, hot-headed sociopath, cold-blooded psychopath. Um, so psychopaths are notoriously unemotional. Um, that, no, they can have, you know, they can be greedy and they can be violent and things like that but they do not react much when if you try to to provoke them and if they do if they do show a reaction it's because they did a quick calculation on what is the best way to react right so in other words if you ever see me flipping out i can't believe you that's because i that's because i thought to myself this is the appropriate uh image to project to this person right now right because there are there are situations where 
it's best to be as enraged as possible, right? If you were, if you were cornered by five guys and they were about to beat you to death, it's in your best interest to be just to flip out and be in, as enraged and go into a berserker frenzy or something like that, right? So you can actually calculate that stuff. But um, yeah, uh, uh, Muhammad Hijab is an insecure, uh, borderline narcissistic person with some serious issues. You, you, so and that's why I told him, remember when we started talking about this, when he started talking about everyone's wives, we were on a live stream and I said, you do, I, how many times did I tell him? Like 30? Dude, you do not want to go this route. You are not made for this. I said, you're not made for this. Your ideology is not made for this. You're easily provoked. This is not the route you want to go. And of course, <laughs> yeah, we see once again, D. Wood, right. You know how these people are? That's what I noticed. Um, Mama Sijab's fans, you know, before I had a conversation with him, you know, maybe, maybe you know the context, I'm going to talk about it. But um, when I asked Mohammed Sijab about the, the, the death penalty for apostasy, because his dumb friends uh, denied it. He, they said, oh, Islam doesn't kill anything. Like Islam says, if you kill one person, it's like you've killed all mankind. You know, that, that typical um, talk. <laughs> uh, but when I asked Mohammed Hijab about the ruling for apostates, the death penalty for apostates, I asked him, can you please clarify what the punishment for apostasy is? He then went ahead and said that uh, he actually believes that um, <clears throat> While he understands that uh, capital punishment for apostasy is a classical opinion and that uh, his friends, including Al-Dawah, for example, um, you know, uh, advocate for that and, and approve of that and reiterate that, he personally thinks that ex-Muslims should be apostates, should be relocated uh, to a non-Muslim country instead. But uh, don't think well of Mohammed Hijab. He doesn't actually say that very genuinely. And because he's so concerned about the lives of people, he, he only says that because he thinks at the current stage, Islamic states would be would face a lot of, uh, you know, backlash and uh, power, uh, overwhelming power from other nations, from other states. If they implemented such a law, he only thinks at the current stage, they should uh, Islamic states should relocate uh, apostates. So anyway. But uh, Mohammed Hijab's average fan normally thinks that I should be executed and that uh, apostates should be executed, that people who leave Islam and speak against Islam should be executed and they don't see any problem with that. Now, but look, this is how they work. This is how they are. Look, th this, is, this is Mohammed Hijab. Uh, this hand, my left hand, is Mohammed Hijab. This is the average Mohammed Hijab fan. Now, this, this average Mohammed Hijab fan says, apostates should be executed, the apostates should be executed, the apostates should be executed. This is Mohammed Hijab. He's also saying, apostates should be executed, the apostates should be executed. Apostates should be executed, apostates should be executed. And, and now this is this is how the change goes. I think apostates should be relocated. Apostates should be relocated, the apostates should be relocated, the apostates should be relocated. This is how it goes. Mm -hmm. This is how these people go. Yeah. Immediately, without any question, the average follower, without any question, he was, this guy was just saying like five seconds ago, he was saying, a posse should be executed. A posse should be relocated. A posse should be relocated. A posse should be relocated. That's how they are. That's mm -hmm. how, how, how their uh, mentality works. Yep. They switch immediately according to what, the, what, the, what, what, what their leader says, no matter uh, if it's right or not. Mm -hmm. Now, I, uh, I just pulled up your video, why I am ripping apart the Quran. Oh, yeah. 931,000 views. <laughs> Only a, only a week old, nine hundred and thirty-one thousand views. Now this is this is what this is what I find interesting. All of this, all of this, was the result of hijab. <laughs> hijab saying, "All right, I'm going after everyone's wife now. All right, I'm not just going after you. I'm going after your wife." Notice everyone, and this is going to keep coming up over and over again. People like hijab. And Ali Dawa and Adnan Rashid, these guys, these kinds of guys, Fareed, they're, they're they're looking for a way to control you, right? Um, the standard way is just praise and blame. If you don't do what we want, we will call you a bigot and an Islamophobe, and that's that's good enough to control most people. But if you do what we want, we will praise you and say, you see, this person is a good person. Yes, we like this person, right? So they control a lot of people this way. Then if, if that doesn't work, then it becomes, you know, more just showering people with abuse. And if that doesn't work, then, okay, that's not working. Let me, let me go after, let me, let me start sending threats, right? We'll, we'll kill you. We'll slaughter your family. And it's, what they're doing is, hey, what will work? 
what will allow us to control this person's behavior to enforce the same kinds of things that we would enforce in Muslim countries through laws and penalties, but we can't in the West. So we have to do, we have to use other means of, of pressure and control. So they'll, you know, start heaping threats on you and stuff like that. And if that doesn't work, you know, now you have hijab. Now, well, I'll go, go after all your families and this and that. And if that doesn't work, well, uh, let me let me go get other people to condemn you. William Lane Craig, will you condemn him? Hey, Christians, will you condemn him? He starts going that route. That doesn't yeah. work. Oh, let me get them canceled from Patreon. Oh, everyone, flag their account. Oh, right? It's uh, it's let me try. Let's try fifty different ways. Let's try fifty different ways of controlling this person's behavior to figure out what will actually work. Well. <laughs> Um, that's the standard method and they do not, they just simply do not understand that there are people who are not going to be controlled by any of those methods and they can't, they can't figure out what to do. So they just start, they just start flipping out and, and, and embarrassing themselves, trying to control people who do not fall for those stupid, stupid methods that, that lots of other people, let's face it, do fall for. So with the, uh, the ripping apart the Quran, this was right in the heat of Muhammad Hijab posting attacks on everyone's wives, trying to figure out how to control us. And me sitting there thinking, me war warning him repeatedly, dude, you don't want to do this. And, and what I'm saying is you're not made for this. In other words, I know how to get, I know how to control your behavior. You don't know how to control mine. You could try 50,000 different ways. You're not going to control our behavior, but I know exactly how to control your behavior. So what did I do? Took a little bite out of Sarat al-Fatiha. Little bite out of Surat Al Fatiha, chewed it up, spit it out. Everyone loses their minds. Hijab, stop posting about the wise because now he's he's his attention has been completely redirected, and he's been flipping out ever since. He's been flipping out ever since. Well, what happened was everyone's flipping out about that, and they're freaking out. And oh, you, you didn't do it. You didn't do it, AP. But you almost fell, I think you fell out of your chair laughing when I did it, right? Yeah. And so people start flipping out on you. And this is this is around the same time that Ali Dawa had had already posted his, um, his video saying, yeah, if we ever get our way, you're dead, dude. In our yeah. ideal world, you are dead. We are coming to kill you. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you were really, really annoyed saying... I was like, mad at the hypocrisy. Yeah, was... yeah, it's it's. Wait, you guys flip out over a piece of paper, <laughs> and this guy's saying he's going to kill me, and you don't care. You just don't care at all. And it's it's not just. It's really not just the. It's not just Muslims. It's it's everyone in general. You would expect there to be massive outrage. Yeah, yeah. How dare this person? If a Christian started saying, "Yes, we're going to go kill people," it would be international news. Man, right. if a Christian refuses to bake a cake, people lose their mind. Yeah, they lose their Sorry. mind. Oh, you won't bake a cake? Oh, oh, it's the end of the world. We'll take you to court. And here you've got you've got Ali Dawa. Uh, yes, we're gonna kill you. We're gonna kill you for reals. Um, and and it, it's it's fine with everyone, but shame shame on <clears throat> shame on you for laughing when I chewed up and spit out yeah, yeah. a passage of the Quran. So you, oh, how how awful of me. Yeah, so you, oh, none of this was none of this was planned, but you start uh, tearing up the Quran, and then I kind of joined in, and now your video has nine hundred and thirty-one thousand views on YouTube, and lots of people are flipping out, and they and they don't they don't understand. Actually, wow, <laughs> it went up it went up a thousand in the past couple of minutes, so now it's nine hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred. But uh, so pull up the like dislike ratio of the video. Yeah, uh, fourteen thousand likes, two hundred and thirty-five thousand dislikes. <laughs> fourteen thousand likes, two hundred and thirty-five thousand <laughs> dislikes. And but notice, I mean that that just proves the point. Especially if you look through the comments and see, you could make multiple videos just out of how many threats you're getting. But it's it really illustrates the point that, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> that this. This is much worse in the eyes of many people in this world. This is much worse than if someone slit your throat. And yeah. that should be important to people to be aware of, right? People should be looking at this going, whoa, what is making people think that, that doing this, crumbling up this page of a book is far, far worse than slicing this man's head off? What, what, why, 
what 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 is this ideology doing to people that it's making them think that way because if it's making it's not just one random person who thinks that way that way look at the numbers there it's a very very large group of people who think that way and if there's a large group of people who think that it's far worse to you know do something to a book than to massacre someone we might want to look into this problem you know what you know what the funny thing is um 90 percent 95 percent of the people who have actually come to the video come on the on the video and have watched it and have disliked it have not understood what the video is even about all they see is there is somebody here who, who is tearing apart the Quran mm -hmm. and he's talking and he's laughing. That's all they see. They leave a dislike. They go and spread it to others. The others come and uh, look and see somebody tearing up the Quran. They leave a dislike, say, how dare you do this? May Allah punish you. And they leave. And it just goes like that. In fact, when, I, when you look at the statistics, uh, you know, I see the statistics of every video. And I look at the statistics right now on my why I'm ripping apart the Quran video. The average view duration of the video is one minute and 28 seconds. The video is six and a half minutes long. Mm -hmm. My average view duration on my average video is five minutes. Mm -hmm. So the average video is watched five minutes, but this video is on average watched only one minute and 20 seconds, meaning that, as I said, most of the people who come and watch this video don't actually watch the video. They have no idea what it is about. They have no idea what I'm saying while I'm ripping apart the Quran. They have no idea why I'm ripping apart the Quran. They have no idea about anything at all. All they see is that there is some guy who dares to rip apart the Quran and we must do what we as Muslims must do and mm -hmm. protest this and send uh, insults and threats in response to this. In fact, I made a follow up video just a few days later called uh, sorry for ripping up the Quran and that was basically a joke video in which I again showed at the beginning how these people justify the killing of me and other apostates and how I as a response rip up the Quran and say is this worse than telling people that they should be uh, you know executed for their beliefs and I say basically in that video I am deeply sorry that people are seriously offended by me ripping apart the Quran and that they didn't get the message. Apparently, next time I need to be clearer about my message, and I will be. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But the people come and think that I'm genuinely apologizing for ripping up the Quran, and they dislike it and say, your apology is not accepted. Do you think you can get away with an apology? So these people have no idea what they're watching. They have no idea what this is about. Mm -hmm. They just react with such anger to me ripping up a book, pieces of paper, pieces of paper, mm -hmm. whereas, whereas everybody is quiet, including, and I'm saying this again, I don't care what anybody thinks in response, not only Muslims, everybody is completely quiet about the fact that known Muslim apologists in the West come out and say, you, you little weakling, you deserve to be executed. And you know what? We will be watching and we are proud of that. No one cares about that, but people care about this. People care about this here. Yeah. Oh, you still got pieces laying around too? That's funny. I, di I didn't clean it up. It's I didn't clean it up either. It's, it's they're all over the they're all over the place. <laughs> we 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 can we can make it we can make it rain here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> speaking of making it rain, Muhammad Hijab made it rain, and I don't mean in a sick golden shower sort of way that he uh, likes to talk about. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> money wise. <laughs> <laughs> money wise guys i'm just saying because people have been bringing up the patreon situation that's uh I th is that what i titled this video oh yeah they're trying to get us banned um oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> and this is really i i I, to I told people i i really don't need any increase in funds but this always cracked me up when someone would try to get someone canceled and then the, a bunch of people would rally around that person and support them even more and stuff like that and so it was just a big slap in the face of the people who were trying to get people demonetized and so on but Muhammad Hijab posted a video. That video has been taken down by YouTube. Um, it said it said that it, it violated its terms on harassment and bullying. Now, I actually don't know why that is. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Uh, and it, <laughs> Hijab, I'm not going to agree with you on much in life. But you can say right now, I'm totally fine with Hijab having that video up. I even posted clips on my own channel so in other words i have a bit broader uh acceptance of freedom of speech than whoever took that video down so hijab you can use this 
I'm the one, you know, well, I guess AP too, but uh, I don't care if that video stays up. So you can use that in your uh, appeal to YouTube. You can say, I don't care. Unless it was harassment against Patreon because he sent he sent uh, all his followers to mass uh, mass complain to Patreon, which can be annoying if you're, you're a company, especially if it's someone complaining over something totally stupid. So anyway, guys, uh, Muhammad Hijab posted a video saying... Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna all go to Patreon. We're gonna make Patreon accounts, and we're gonna go to their, go to their pages and complain that this is hate speech. And we're gonna show them the video where they're eating the Quran and where they're ripping up the Quran, and we're gonna get them banned. And so I posted a video last night pointing out that people did that. I mean, pointing out that uh, that hijab did that, and that people were going and going and complaining and filing all these false flags. And pretty hilarious situation. My number of patrons shot up pretty quick. What, what, what was what happened with you, AP? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, after he published that video, I received some uh, some some new people came and and became became uh, patron supporters. But especially after you published that video, mm -hmm. uh, where you showed how he's demanding people to 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 to, to report us to get us banned from Patreon. Mm -hmm. I think uh, over a hundred new people came to uh, became became new Patreon supporters and, and started supporting me and said, "Hey, I am just here because of Mohammed Hijab and because of David Wood, and uh, I will support you from now on." Thank you so much. And <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at mine right now, and I'm up. I think I think you're I believe you're up over a hundred a hundred and some, and I'm up about a hundred and looks like over a hundred and forty. I mean, you're talking you're talking. Two years worth of work to get an additional 140 subscribers and hijab, man, he's just <laughs> funding the counter jihad. He's funding all of us. I, I feel like I feel like he deserves a percentage of this. By the way, you know what you know what I, I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? Because I don't really I don't really need the uh, extra and I mean I, there's there's always stuff I can use it for and to upgrade and to expand and things like that but at least for this first month for this first month i think i'm going to take all the extra money all the extra money and i'm going to go to all the channels that hijab really doesn't like and just load them up with super chats and put like this donation brought to you courtesy of muhammad hijab um and uh just just say hey this is this is this is all thanks to hijab can you can can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine if you'd gone after him and tried to get him canceled and tried to get him demonetized, and then it's just you know he ends up getting way more support? That's yeah, that's yeah. got to hurt. That's got to suck because they really, they really, really hate us. To be clear, Muslims of the world, I do not hate you. I don't hate even the really, really nasty ones. Right? Why? I used to be a very, very nasty, violent person. And so it's just it's just not my business to say, ha, huh, this person is pure evil and, uh, you know, deserves nothing but but contempt. Right. There's 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 hope for these people as long as they're as long as they're alive. There's there's hope for these people. Um, but they really hate us. They yeah. really, really hate us. They would gladly they would gladly at least many of them would gladly execute us if they only had an opportunity. Right. So they really, really hate us. So they, again, it, it's all part of a desire to control behavior, right? So me and AP in a Muslim society would not be allowed to say these things. So these guys, Muhammad Hijab and Farid, and they do not believe that we should be allowed to say these things because it goes against Islam. It never enters, their, it just doesn't enter their mind. You're not in an Islamic country. These guys are not bound by the commands and teachings of a 7th century, you know, Arabian caravan robber. They don't have to obey him, right? But they, nope, this is this is from Allah. They must obey it, right? <laughs> but they can't enforce it through the law, so they try and enforce it in other ways. What's the goal? Stop us from criticizing Islam. You've got Muhammad, who orders us to be violently subjugated, uh, orders us to be executed, allows for our, our, our wives to be taken as sex slaves, our kids to be enslaved, allows all this stuff. And then their message is, but shut up about it. Don't say a word. Just let us spread. Do not, do not speak against this ideology that calls for your annihilation. Do not say a word about it. Our response, of course, is no, but they look for ways of controlling us. 
to get the same result as you'd have in Pakistan. Namely, people just aren't, aren't criticizing Islam. They're looking for the same result, but they have to use other means. Well, uh, you know, insults didn't work, abuse didn't work, threats didn't work, nothing is working. Oh, let me go after the Patreons. <laughs> Oops. I just got them way more support. <laughs> I, is, use your mind a little bit. Or use your mind. I, are you dumb, man? Seriously, use your mind a little bit. If if I wanted to cause harm, if I wanted to cause damage to someone's uh, cause so much, and I'm, I have to be very honest, I'm definitely not as obsessed with other people's uh, work and with other people's path as Mohammed Hijab is with ours uh, at, the, at the moment. Uh, if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't go there and, and point out uh, something that that person has and, 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 and call my own audience to take that down, especially not something like Patreon. I wouldn't say, hey, here's his Patreon account. Here, I, I will show you his Patreon account. Please, everybody, go and take this down. Please report this. I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I would think a little bit further. I would think a few steps further and would think, hey, if I do this, this will just end up in uh, people on the other side becoming much more agitated by me and becoming much more defensive and supportive of my opponent and supporting him. So I shouldn't be doing that. That is probably a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I would think. And this guy is so dumb. He's really so dumb. So deep in his, in his anger, in his rage, that he cannot use his mind a few steps ahead and does something like this. Um, George, George, Lee just said, uh, <laughs> George Lee just said, hi, David, invite Bob the Builder. Um, Yes, I already have. Uh, me and Bob the Builder have been uh, corresponding. We're just trying to figure out because of the time zone difference when is a uh, good time to uh, to have a discussion. Uh, but yes, absolutely. It's it's tactic wise. I mean, he basically has two tactics. Well, he he has three, right? So, uh, bully, deceive, and whine. Right, those are his three tactics: bully, deceive, and whine. So he's going to try and deceive you if he can. He's going to try and bully if you bully you if he can. If he can't, then he's going to whine and complain and, and throw a tantrum. So tactical, his tactic, his tactical toolbox is rather limited, <laughs> especially when we know the dude cannot stand criticism. He can't. Uh, he just he can't take it. He flips out. His his his. His ego is too fragile. And so that's why, hey, hijab, just don't get into this. But then, gosh, if I had normal human feelings, I would feel bad for this guy because how he must feel right now, right? This guy must be feeling right now. Gosh, I just went after these dudes. I tried everything else. I whined. I tried to get other people to condemn them. Uh, everything we've done, I tried to bully them. I went after their wives. Nothing worked. And now I'm trying to defund them and i've managed to massively increase their resources mm -hmm. i've managed to massively in increase their financial resources so that they can do more so that they can put <laughs> out more content so that they can hire people right i really want to send a i really want to send a send a postcard to to mom and to job i want to say hey thank you very much for your support this is my my gift to you Thank you for, uh, for 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 making our work much bigger. Seriously, I, I begin to I'm beginning to think that Mohammed Hijab is. I don't want to I don't want to reveal this to the public. I don't want to uh, expose him. It wouldn't be good. But I'm beginning to think that Mohammed Hijab has actually left Islam. He actually doesn't believe in Islam anymore. He's now an ex-Muslim, and he just wants to abuse the situation as much as possible and help the enemies of Islam. He wants to help uh, me and you and others in uh, becoming more significant and he wants to damage Islam as much as possible at the moment until he before he announces publicly that he has left Islam that he doesn't believe in it anymore because everything that he has done for the last two months is so ridiculously absurd and so harmful to Islam and just so good for us it, 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 what's hilarious is how these guys are going along with it I mean I would think I would I would think like you one I wouldn't I just I, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to get someone demonetized and so on. I if if it goes it goes it goes back to what I was talking about earlier with like insecurity, right? If I want to go after someone, I'm coming right at them. I'm going right at them, right? If I want to go after you, I just boom, let's 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 do this, right? Hey, job. Oh, how can I get them behind the scenes? Oh, how can I sneak up on them? How can I how can I trick them, right? Um, so one, I wouldn't do it. But two, even if I were the sort of person who would do it, 
I'm like, I'm thinking like you. Well, m maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe this will draw more attention to this scenario. And what what's just amazing is this entire situation, the Quran eating, the the Quran ripping, all of that stuff is because of hijab. I don't want to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, 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 I liked I liked the equilibrium that we had. That we make videos and and they try to defend their profit, right? That's good. I want to keep doing that. I think they've realized. Well, that's not working in the long run. To be very honest, uh, as for me, I was I was I was uh, I was working on several videos, and they were all about. Uh, I was really going into topics like uh, the Day of Judgment. Um, uh, the, uh, the contrast between Islamic scripture and Christian scripture, uh, you know, stuff like that. I was I was going into these things. I was going into the Ten Commandments. I even have a list here of things that I was going to do over the over the next few weeks, and they were all tasks that I have to, um, you know, sit down, re-research stuff, uh, do this again. And I was really trying to find the motivation to do that stuff. And I and I was I felt like nothing is really going on right now. But then Muhammad Hijab came. <laughs> Mohammed Hijab came and started attacking me so brutally, mm -hmm. and he he completely gave me he gave me so much motivation to do more stuff and to to go very hard to produce brutal stuff. I'm currently just not publishing videos because my channel is being bombed by Indonesian Muslims. Mm -hmm. By the way, it is it is it is morning right now in Indonesia. They have uh, they just got up and they will start. <laughs> there they, goes your views. They, <laughs> <laughs> they will they will they will start bombing my Quran ripping video again, and my Quran ripping video will probably reach like a, a one and a half million or something today. I don't know, but uh, or tomorrow, not today. But uh, he, he brought this back to me. You know, he made me. He gave me a good reason to to have energy again and to have mm -hmm. uh, devotion and motivation again, and it's 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 amazing. By the way, I want to say thank you to everybody who has. Um, if we, we, I'm, I'm mocking, I'm being sarcastic, but uh, seriously, thank you so much to, to everybody who has been supportive, who has decided to uh, support us on Patreon after what Mohammed Hijab did. Thanks for all the support among all the trash that I'm currently getting from Indonesia and from all over the, the world because of my Quran ripping video. But seriously, thank you so much, everybody, for, 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 for your support. And, everything yeah I'm, I'm not sh i'm not sure what the exact number was but i believe someone could correct well no you can't correct me now because it j the video has been taken down i think I, uh, I do have a copy of it. not not terribly important i think i had 116 i mean a uh, oh, thousand and sixteen um patrons when hijab posted that video i think that's the that's the screenshot he used at the time of his video so uh, 116, I mean, 1,016, I believe. It's now 1,161. So I'm up 145 patrons since Hijab tried to get us demonetized. <laughs> Man. And, and, and again, what, what's, what's, what's absolutely amazing is that people go along with these stupid, stupid plans because they're rallying around this guy. Let, let's look at it. Let's look at a couple of, let's look at a couple of examples here. Let me see if I can pull these up here. What an idiot. All right, so this is Fareed. <laughs> Fareed responds. By the way, he's the other He's the other one who's primarily responsible. There are three important figures in the holes in the narrative. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, there, I just made a note. Just made yeah. a note. Sorry. So Fareed, Fareed is the one who leaked Yasser Qadi's emails, um, saying that he's... He's having doubts about, I guess, the standard narrative. He's having a crisis of faith or something like that. But that was all in secret. But Farid, oh, I must expose him. Ha, 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 ha. Right? So then uh, Hijab tries to get Yasser Qadi to clarify this because he thinks Yasser Qadi is just going to go, no, my good man, the Quran's been perfectly preserved. I was talking about something else. And instead, epic, epic, epic dumpster fire of a train wreck of an interview destroys the confidence of tons and tons of muslims so this is farid and so this is why these guys are are obsessed with bringing us down they know we're the ones who will use this material to wreck islam so this is farid sending a message to patreon support two individuals that thrive off donations through your site engage in hate crimes <laughs> This is this is actually hate hilarious. Crime. Look, he says hate crimes like eating and tearing the Quran. <laughs> Does this not go against your community guidelines? Answer for read? No. It doesn't. That's not a hate that's not a hate crime, you giant giant infant. 
maybe yes. where you live or maybe that's a, that's a hate crime where you live and I don't want to live there. No one wants to live there to be very honest. But... <laughs> Fareed, that's not a hate crime. <laughs> so uh, long answer, long a short answer, no. Long answer, no, not a hate crime. <laughs> but so uh, what, you know what I find so funny? Farid is a guy. I, I I haven't ever talked about him uh, very much. I don't usually talk about him, but uh, Farid is a guy who started his channel just because he wanted to refute all my work. That was his primary purpose why he started this channel, and he uh, just started making videos about me. And he made like fifty videos about about me mm -hmm. in response to uh, to fifty something videos that I made, and. Um, According to him, those videos completely destroyed me and uh, re refuted every major thing that I said about Islam, refuted all my major videos, all, all my major topics. And what he did afterwards, uh, when he was done with me, when he announced that he was done with me, is he said, uh, from now on, apostate prophet is completely destroyed. We are done with him. Brothers, everybody, we should also from now on, uh, you know, like uh, be done with him. He's destroyed. He, he can never come back from this. He has been finished. And this and that, and then uh, watch him crumble now. And but but then, see, nothing happened. I'm still going on. I'm still here. My my, my channel is still growing. People are still watching my videos. No one cares about this guy called Farid, mm -hmm. which is why he, which is why people come come here to post his uh, to links to his videos. But my average viewer goes there and thinks, what kind of stupidity is this? Yeah. What kind of dumb dumb refutation is this? Yeah. And. It, it doesn't work. He claims that we are destroyed. He even blocks me to pretend that I don't exist on Twitter. He, I, I am blocked by Farid, so I cannot actually view his tweets. But then he obviously sees that all of this didn't work. So he goes into that plan to get us banned from Patreon to end us in a way because his intellectual ways don't convince anybody. And I have to say, I, I don't talk about him. The issue is that... Um, I have a problem with many of these Muslim apologists, and I would genuinely say, when we talk about Ali Dawa, for example, I didn't want to, I don't even want to mention his name, but I did. When we, when, we, when we talk about him or Muhammad Hijab or several others, I would say that many of these are terrible people. You know, AD is a is a horrible, horrible human being. Muhammad Hijab has very serious problems and is a horrible human being. Certain others are uh, are, are very problematic, but when it comes to that guy, this Farid guy. I just don't think he's a terrible person. You know, I don't. I don't think he's a horrible mm -hmm. human being. The problem with this person is just that he's so stupid mm -hmm. that I cannot take this guy seriously. Yeah. And I and I feel like this guy is not is not a, is not a bad guy. He's not an awful guy. He's just very dumb. Yeah. And I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to how to respond to to somebody because he, it's not really his fault entirely. You know. Yeah. And, with, with with people like with people like Fareed, because everyone's like. I get this all the time. So and so that you've never heard of made a video responding to you. Are you going to refute him? It's like what? No, no, right? So it's all of these guys, especially you know, with like Farid respond. Give these guys a couple years. Give them some time to grow in popularity. Right? Let them get popular. Then, then do something. Right? Because if you yeah. if you spend your time going after every random guy who comes along, well, guess what? The, the person doesn't have a tremendous following what did you do what did you accomplish um and so yeah let these guys in, in fact with hijab and ali dawa i was not gonna i was not gonna be responding to these guys for probably another two years i wanted them to grow in popularity when when you see a muhammad hijab and an ali dawa and you know their personality type and you know that they can't stand criticism and you know that you can control their behavior and cause a massive meltdown like that those are the people you want to become popular, right? Yeah. And popular representatives, the popular face of your opposing ideology. So that once they become the most popular things there are, then you go after them and then they, you know, do a lot of damage. Um, unfortunately for hijab, he just decided to accelerate things. And so I kind of had to, to uh, modify my plans. But yeah, once he, <laughs> once he crossed a certain line. Now, if he, uh, he will eventually back off because... Guys, uh, on this uh, on this desecration of the Quran until Muhammad Hijab takes down his tweets about attacking women, um, I'm at about level three right now on a scale of one to ten of how far I'm going to go and how far I'm willing to go. I'm at about a three. So level one would be, you know, just standard refutation. Uh, level two... 
Level two would be mock mockery. Level three is where I'm actually taking a bite out of the Quran. Um, <laughs> level, I'm going to stay at level three because I would consider level three, um, you know, my origami lesson. I think that it's about the same level. Then I'm going to go to, you know, four and five, which that's going to be the, you know, eating eating the Quran with bacon and washing it down with some beer, right? That, that, that's, that's, there you're adding some additional things. And after that, after that, you know, once, once you're going level five, six and beyond, that's where you're getting other people involved. That's where you're yeah. getting other people involved. And guys, I do not want to go this route. I want to stay at levels one and two. Um, standard refutation and sometimes mockery with it. That's the Those are the levels I want to be at. If you are crossing lines and you guys are cheering him, again, if Hijab were some random person, I would not... Uh, if Hijab were some random person, I would not think, oh, we need to escalate in response to this person. When he's very popular and everyone's supporting him and everyone's cheering him on, then you got to you gotta nip this stuff in the butt. So as long as he has these tweets up attacking women, then I'm going to continue escalating. But notice I'm doing it. I'm going, I'm going really slowly. I'm escalating very slowly. I could dial it up to 10 right now. I could, for the rest of my rest of my YouTube career, just keep Quran soaking in jars of urine behind me as I record these videos. I <laughs> could do all of that, um, but I don't want to. So we're going to keep escalating slowly until we reach a threshold that Hijab just can't bear, and that's when he'll he'll back down. And guess what? Then we're done. And guess what? I'm going to go back to leaving him alone because I again I want this guy to to in continue increasing in popularity until. He is ripe. <laughs> I have to be very honest. Um, I, I'm kind of sick of talking to these people and going back and forth with these people. I, do, I don't ever want to actually get into personal feuds. I'm not. I'm not that guy. If you meet me in person, I don't. I don't ever have, want to have a fight with you. Mm -hmm. But um, in this situation, since I'm doing the, these online polemics, of course it, it happens. And because Muhammad Hijab is such a terrible person, I'm also, to be very honest, I'm getting, a, I'm really getting a kick out of, yeah, uh, out of mocking him back, out of insulting it him. Is, it is, it is fun, back. isn't it? I'm really is getting it fun? a kick out of it because I know that he's a terrible person. I see what he does to everybody, what he tries to do to me. So when I do it back to him, and I see how it works. It, it really gives me joy. I get pleasure out of it. I have to, mm -hmm. I'm very honest about this. I'm really getting pleasure out of, uh, out, out of being so, out of letting all of this out on him, for example. And, and, and uh, I, I agree with something you said earlier. You were saying that, you know, you had all these projects planned and so on. You got this kind of burst of energy because I've been telling people that for a long time. Namely that, I mean, I, I get a burst of energy in response to aggression uh, in response, especially if someone pulls a dirty stunt, and it's it's interesting. It's like a burst of it's a burst of physical energy, right? I'll become I'll become instantly more focused, but I'll also get a burst of like creative energy. Like I'll come up with ideas that I never yes. thought of, I never thought of before. And so it's uh, th this is <laughs> this is what's hilarious. I mean, it's insanely hilarious. It I mean, it's so easy to figure out these guys you know, to figure out these guys personality wise and how to figure out what to do uh, to get them to behave in a certain way. They try everything to figure to figure us out when guys, it it's pretty easy to figure me out too, right? If you if you want me to leave you alone, leave me alone, right? Don't provoke me, don't don't keep coming at me. Uh, don't keep coming at me with threats and, uh, you know, attacks on my family. Don't come, don't ever come with that. Right. Because as much as it's ingrained into your mind, this is how you control people. It does not work with everyone. Guys, you, you have to say, oh, here's what would work with this person. Here's what would work with that person. Here's what would work with this person. If the, if a sort of person that you're dealing with responds to aggression with creative energy and refuting you, you don't be aggressive towards that person. Right. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's just it's a situation where if people leave me alone, I would sit back and spend a lot of my time reading occasionally making videos based on stuff I'm interested in, which would be Islam sometimes, mainly because I think someone needs to do it. If it's just what I'm interested in, I would not be making videos on Islam. So I mm -hmm. would actually most likely be pursuing many other interests. 
if these guys were not some of the, the nastiest people in the world, the people like Hijab, the people like Ali Dawa, uh, the pe basically the people who send me insults and abuse all day long. If you know, you have the, the calm, peaceful Muslims who aren't trying to start a problem with anyone, aren't trying to go out and, and control people, if everyone was just like that, I'd be focusing on something else. But uh, it's so it here's what's amazing. The hijabs and Ali Dawas of the world, Muhammad hijabs and Ali Dawas, those guys who are trying to shut us down are the ones who fuel us, right? Yeah. They're they're the sources of energy for what we do. And it's just, um, here's what's amazing. <laughs> Their attacks are, the, are a source of like uh, internal mental and physical energy to go after their ideology. But now they've also expanded into becoming a source of financial <laughs> financial <laughs> energy for us, right? That now they're they're funding us. And it's guys, how do you ever get to a point where you say, maybe we should not be following these guys tactic wise. Maybe we should not be following hijab and Ali Dawa and stuff like that tactic wise. But it seems like they just can't get around it, right? He's, yeah, he's yeah. the one thumping his chest. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> so we have to follow him. I have to tell you, I will be, I will son, I will soon be uh, done with Muhammad Tajam. I would have normally been, been I done will with, too. I, I will I would too. Have been once he breaks, with, <laughs> I would have been done with uh, a Muslim apologist long ago. But with him, it, it will, it, it takes quite a while, and I will soon be done with him. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that. Uh, but what the, the, I will be done once I am done publishing. Uh, what I'm working on right now, which is uh, which I have announced long ago, and I wanted to publish it two weeks ago. I wanted to I wanted to publish it uh, a week ago again, but he keeps adding on it so much stuff, and he made it so much worse. I'm preparing something, and when I'm done with it, I'm calling. I I, I will give it a, a befitting name, and when I'm done with it. Uh, I will tell you, he will beg to, <laughs> to 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 debate me, and I don't know if that if that will still be open then. But I I will tell you, I'll tell I'm telling I'm telling you, he will lose his mind, he will become aggressive, he will again start being going crazy. I don't know I don't know who will fire him next from his job, uh, <laughs> but after I'm after I publish that, I will most likely be done with him because I really need to, I really want to focus on. So much more stuff that I that I want to uh, talk about more Islamic theology. There's a lot of stuff that I'm that I'm that I need to do, but I'm preparing that one thing, and he will. It will be fun for him and for everybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will be. Let's check out a let's check out let's check out a couple more of uh, the people whose brilliant strategy is to get us defunded. And who do we have now? Oh, it's Ali Dawa. Salam and hi, I am Ali Dawa, a.k.a. your friendly Orthodox Muslim. Friendly, friendly. Apost apostates <laughs> must die! Friendly neighborhood. Apostates Muslim. must die. Join the movement below. <laughs> yeah, you want to join You want to join Ali Dawa's movement of executing apostates. Wow. <laughs> so he has his pinned tweet here. Oh, look, here we go. Here's Ali Dawa. Don't stop reporting. The only reason they attack Islam is because the guy makes 10000 a month. Lol. There's me thinking why he is so dedicated. It all makes sense. Let's see how dedicated he'll be after no Patreon. Uh, I, I don't mean to break your heart, Ali Dawa, but I was doing this when I was absolutely dirt poor, significantly below the poverty line. There was a time we had to actually send my oldest two sons to live with their grandparents because I could not afford to feed them because I was going after your profit. <laughs> Some of the dopest videos I've ever made. It just goes, these, these people are the worst. The people, the, the, the people like Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab, they are the worst in the world at actually reading different personality types. Ali Dawa. If I were penniless, if I had absolutely nothing, I would still be coming after your profit. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know I, why you have such a problem here. I have to tell you something, Ali Dawa. I really want to tell you something. Most genuinely, this is the most honest that I will ever be to you, dear Ali Dawa. And I hope you hear this and see this. 
uh, you may be caring about all of this because you had a pathetic life, as you admitted, and you think that uh, Islam and hanging out with these tough people gives your pathetic life a little bit more meaning and makes you feel better than others. It makes you feel special. You may be uh, focusing on all of this and this might be about that to you, about fixing your little pathetic life into a different pathetic life where you feel a little bit stronger and belittle everybody else and try to lecture and school everybody else and advocate for the killing of everybody else. Mm -hmm. To you, it might be about that. To me, it is not. To me, it, it actually matters. To me, the world matters. To me, it matters that I was indoctrinated by this by this uh, ideology, and I know and hear of so many other people who are who go through the same thing. And I really don't want this culture, the culture that I grew up in, and other cultures to be absorbed and poisoned by of what is going on in this world by by the culture that gives you a that gives your pathetic life as i said more meaning in a in, in a very pathetic and vile way i care about that and i do this work because i actually care about that not because i feel so pathetic yeah um, and i really hope you 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 get the message yeah and i'll uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and add to that um i mean first we have <laughs> we have to point out uh we have to point out the obvious if he's saying we're just doing this from for money well, guys, getting us a bunch of extra money <laughs> is only encouraging us, right? So here, you guys have been getting us tons of extra money uh, since yesterday. So, wow, now we're even more encouraged to keep doing exactly what we've been doing because you're making us rich, Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab. Um, but, dude, let, let me break this down to you. Um, I'll probably say this clearly in a video. Maybe my... Uh, I'm, I'm, very soon going to be making a response to Mufti Abu Layth because uh, Abu Layth because I uh, actually like him and think he's think he's pretty cool. So when he objected, I'm I'm inclined to give him a, a good response. But I mean, one of the things I, I think he doesn't know what he's doing. But go ahead, sorry. Oh yeah, I just mean he's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things I'll probably explain if you if you want to know Ali Dawa how this works, I grew up and did a lot of messed up messed up things in my life in fact l let me show you a really dumb comment here awesome said i would love to see david wood being atheist one awesome you should learn to spell atheist if you're going around trying to <laughs> promote people being one uh, but two no if you're an atheist awesome you should not want me to be an atheist because i am uh, by nature a pretty violent person right so in other words, if I if I were some other atheist, and there are lots of atheists like this, I've I've had lots of atheists say this to me, David, I think Christianity is silly, but I'm glad you're a Christian. I'm glad you're a Christian because whatever Christianity is doing, it's making you not not hurt people. Right? So by nature, by nature, I was a pretty violent dude, and I ended up doing some really, really horrible things, Ali Dawa in my life did some really really nasty horrible things and the thing is you know i believe i can be you know forgiven for these things by other people i believe i'm forgiven by god but at the same time you recognize you've done a lot of damage in this world and you can't go back in time and fix it so what can you do what can you do well if i was a if i was a horrible horrible violent person did horrible things in my life i can't go back and undo them but i know what sort of person i am now what can i do to sort of make things right with the world as far as i'm concerned i can fling myself up against the world's most violent ideology until it breaks or until it kills me that's my reasoning ali dawa and if you think taking away money from me is going to change that bit of reasoning keep in mind most of the people who do what we do believe we're signing our death warrants when we start this right it's we understand at the very least we understand there's a good chance that someone will eventually come and slaughter us right so if you think people who say you know i mean N nabil was nabil was asked um we were we were in an interview years ago and he were at the end of the interview we were asked where do you think you'll be 10 years from now and nabil said i think people i think we'll be dead i think someone will have i think jihadis will have killed us by then right so 
the idea that people who believe that we're signing up, you know, we're signing our death warrants because we realize that someone needs to confront your ideology because we look at what happens in Pakistan and Nigeria and all these horrible places because we look at ISIS and Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda. We look at these organizations and we see people like you, Ali Dawa. When we take control, we're going to kill you. Yes, we're going to kill you. We see what you do. We see the impact your ideology has on women. And we say someone has to stand against this no matter what, even if it gets us killed. That's our mentality. And what's your what 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 what? What's your interpretation? It's just doing it for money. Ha ha! I take away their money. <laughs> Oops! Actually, I'll get them way more money. Oh no! What do I do now? You guys just completely lack the ability to read people, right? <laughs> get your mind around. Get your mind around that again, Ali Dawa. The closest. I mean, as far as stopping the desecration of the Quran, I've told you. Saw my head off. Or have his job take down his tweets. That's it, and we're done. It's done. The, the, these fifty different strategies and tactics you come up with will never in a million years work. And you guys can't figure that out. And I, I, I mean, I sit. I can. I can literally sit here explaining. This is the kind of person I am. This is what would work with me. And you're like, oh, well, if that's what would work with you, let me try everything else in the entire world except that. And it's just amazing how how, how <laughs> dumb you how dumb you guys are. Wow. I'm proud of that. Can you say that? Yeah. I'm proud of that. We're proud of that. <laughs> it's it, it it sucks because I've I've only I've I I haven't really heard him. If I uh, I have to go and listen to some of his uh I mean I listened to I listened to that clip but I can't recall exactly what he sounds like. I'll have to listen to a bunch of his clips and then I can get a I can get a better accent down <laughs> or a better parody. That's, that's so awesome. let's see what we have here as far as Ali Dawa. I, I don't think that you will be a bad person if you become an atheist. In fact, I uh, I know for sure that after we have our debate, uh, you will become an atheist. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, don't laugh; it's 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 obvious. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you will be a bad person if you're not, if you're an atheist. <laughs> I might. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, check it out, check it out. So this is his post from yesterday, Ali Dawa. How to report Patreon funding of David Wood and the apostate prophet. Let's see when funding stop. If they were doing it for the money or because they really saw Islam as a threat, lol. No, why on earth would we see Islam as a threat when you're sitting there openly posting videos saying that the apostate prophet's going to be executed? I mean, gosh, apostate prophet, why would you take someone saying, yes, we're going to execute you, as any as as any kind of threat hey but ch ch check this out <laughs> check this out but people are seriously asking me a question I, I go on there and people are asking asking me this question they say uh so i i get that you have left islam and i get that uh, ex-muslims leave islam but why is it that ex-muslims have to still call themselves ex-muslims why is it that they still have to talk about islam after they have left islam well what do you think why what do you think what do you think seriously what do you think we know that there are people like this and other people who seriously want to spread Islam to the world and want to uh, want to want to turn the world into a an, an Islamic world. And in their ideal Islamic world, in their ideal Islamic system, an Islamic uh, state must be established. That is a requirement according to according to their worldview. And in that Islamic state, somebody who leaves Islam, so me, needs to be uh, punished by being killed, by being sentenced to death, by being executed. So. Uh, of course I speak against Islam. Are you, are you dumb? Of course, as, as I exist and as I see that these people are going out there and trying to spread uh, their religion through propaganda, a religion that if they succeed will execute me, of course I will be outraged by that and know that and oppose that. Now, to be very honest, very frank with you, I don't ever believe that these people will succeed. I don't believe that Islam will succeed. I don't believe that Islam will Nor do get I. big. I believe that Islam will completely fail. I believe Islam, I believe even without me or you, and even without people like us, Islam is a complete failure and it will fail. The, their plans won't work. Their wet dreams of, sorry, of uh, having... having a, a You're on a Christian space. channel, sir. A Christian channel. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shame on you, sir! Execute people in Britain will never work. It will fail. It will never work. But still, as long as I exist and as long as I care about this world and about myself and other people like me, and as I as I have a little bit of empathy, I will, of course, do my job, do my part, and speak against this. I mean, how how could it be any clearer? Seriously, mm -hmm. man. Um, so let's go ahead and click on, so look, how to report Patreon funding of David Wood and the Apostate Prophet. Let's see when funding stop, if they were doing it for the money or cause they really saw Islam as a threat, lol. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the epic instructions and it's how to report Patreon funding of David Wood and well, let's go ahead and have it up. Oh! The video has been removed for violating YouTube's terms of service. Uh-oh. Wow. And again, I don't even know. Again, I mean, it could be because harassing Patreon or something like that. But still, it's weird to say, hey, telling people to mass flag something is uh, is harassment. I believe that is, uh, that is mentioned in YouTube's uh, community guidelines. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. If it is, then, then that's, to on, incite, that's on them. So, incite people to... You know, take action against a particular person or something like that. I think that is uh, mentioned in their community guidelines, and it's forbidden. Well, then this would be a a community guidelines strike, I'm presuming, and uh -huh. and then he got us over a hundred new patrons each, mm -hmm. and I haven't even noticed. I can make more videos. Ali Dawa tries to get us banned from Patreon. Um, Adnan Rashid tries to get us banned from Patreon. Can point out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even know who Adam Rashid is. I think he's a, he's some he's a joke, like right. <laughs> um, no, I think he's like there. I think he's like some some kind of mentor to them. No, I, I know Adnan Rashid. I've known Adnan, Adnan that, Rashid for years. Yeah, that explains everything. I mean, I, I, that, that that guy had had a little bit of communication with me for like five minutes, and he was a complete <laughs> a failure. I don't know. He, uh, he, he, did, he left a, he left a comment where he was like where he was saying oh you're scared of course we will not debate you no one will debate you and none of our Muslim apologists will debate you and this and that uh, you should be ashamed of yourself and this and this don't delete my comment now and then he makes a comment after that and says why did you delete my original comment you should no one will debate you this and this and I go through his comments and he left three comments in the two last comments, he, he, he claims that I deleted his previous comments, but his comments are all still there. I see them and people even respond to them. And then he goes on, on Twitter and says, I just left this comment on, 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 you, on Apostate Prophet's YouTube channel and he deleted them because he doesn't want people to see the truth. But I, I see a screenshot of all his three comments still there. And I, just res and I just responded to him. I said, hey, I don't even know who the hell you are. And I, I don't, I'm not asking you for a debate. So. A very strange individual. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> so let's see what Adnan has here. Uh, so at the top of Adnan's page, he has uh, this. Uh, so Adnan retweeted Fareed. So an important question to Patreon support. Two individuals that thrive off donations through your site engage in hate crimes. <laughs> that cracks me up. Hate crimes like eating and tearing the Quran. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hate crime. You mean hate crimes like saying people should be executed for no longer believing in a certain religion? Yeah, Is I mean, that a hate crime. I mean, just 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 think about the Quran and the Hadith. You know, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Uh, Muhammad said, "I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah." Right? I mean, ordering people to fight and subjugate over their beliefs. That's all fine. What about beating your wife? Oh, that's fine. Everything is fine. What about uh, you know tearing the Quran? That's a hate crime. They wow. should be banned. <laughs> Adnan Rashid. Adnan Rashid says this is the least anyone who believes in Allah and His Messenger can do. <laughs> well, hey, hey, Adnan. If this is the least you can do, then what would if someone wanted to do more? What would that be? Saw our heads off. I'm guessing. <laughs> So Anand says, this is the least anyone who believes in Allah and his messenger can do. Please share, please share far and wide and cut the funding of these evil, evil Islamophobes. Oh. It just cracks me up that these are the guys using Islamophobes. Right? These, yes, we're going to kill you. We're going to execute you. Yes, we'll destroy you. Ah, ah, we're going to grow and destroy you. Islam, fastest growing religion that will establish Sharia and then blasphemy laws. Ah, ah, ah. And if you don't want to be governed, <laughs> 
by the teachings of an illiterate 7th century caravan robber who boned a little girl. If you don't want to be covered by that, well, we're going to call you evil Islamophobes. <laughs> it is so funny. The average a progressive person in America, the average liberal person in America, who, I'm not saying liberals all use that language, they don't, but the average person in America who would call us Islamophobes, for example, or who would call people Islamophobes, would, th would call us Islamophobes because they would think that we falsely claim yeah. that Islam is violent mm -hmm. and that Islam does things like killing apostates and all these uh, weirdly perverted sexual things, these acts of intolerance. They would call us Islamophobes because of that. But then you have these people, these Dawah people from the UK, who call us Islamophobes for those things that the liberals think we think of them, which is why they think we are Islamophobes. This is so ridiculously dumb. Seriously. <laughs> it, 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 it is it is just absolutely insane right i mean you're right the, the people i mean even organizations like care and isna and stuff like that muslim organizations in the west who've been calling people islamophobes their message has always been they're islamophobes because islam doesn't teach any of these things it doesn't teach that you know apostates should be killed that's all a lie that's all a myth it, it doesn't teach that it's okay to have sex with a nine-year-old girl it doesn't teach that and then you've got these guys of course it teaches that. Of course we're going to chop your head off. Of course. You're but you're Islamophobes. <laughs> it's like, guys, you, you don't understand how this works, right? You don't yeah. understand the process don't of, use of, of using this label. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. Um, all right. Should we? Uh, yeah. Let's go through the super chats yeah. here. We should. I'm going to go through the super chats. There's if you a, believe in his messenger. There have been a lot of super chats, possibly. That's such ominous language. Like, if you believe in Allah and his messenger. If you believe in his messenger. That sounds like, it sounds unreal. It's like a weird uh, dystopian thing, like TV show where they depict a cult in the future. The least you could do, the least you could do if you won't saw their heads off is, <laughs> is whine to Patreon about them being Islamophobes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the entire situation, ladies and gentlemen, is this not hilarious, right? I mean, just, just think about this, right? Uh, apostate prophet, we're going to kill you when we get the chance. We're going to kill you. And Muhammad is joke, I'm going after your wives. Uh, golden showers, golden showers. Uh, oh, your wives. Oh, everyone whores. Oh, oh whores. Everyone whores. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, and we and, and we, we take a we take a Quran to do something to it for six seconds and then it's oh Patreon will you help us oh will someone help us will you all condemn him it's like it's like guys if you can't if you can't handle this then don't stop starting this stuff and it's the same thing over and over again we'll start it with you we'll try to intimidate you we'll threaten you oh wait oh wait you're doing something pickle oh, let's go whine and complain like a bunch of little girls. It's like this, you know. This is just for this is just for uh, for demonstration right now. I just want to uh, reenact this. What is happening? So can we can we do this act quickly, David? Okay. You are you are you are one of them, and you you go and yell your terrible things at me. You're finished. You're finished, apostate prophet. As soon as we get power over you, we will chop your head off, and we will parade your head through the streets so that everyone else takes takes notice and sees what we do to people like you. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. Ah! <laughs> Is it, hey, we're we're pretty we're pretty good when we just improv these uh, these little scenarios. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh well. Oh, uh, oh, uh, that hurt. <laughs> guys, <clears throat> good job. I'm gonna give. Mm. Uh, it's funny because I keep I keep giving them these awesome insights, and I'm dead Muhammad serious Ted about Star. them. Yeah, uh, Muhammad Hijab. Ali Dawa, you guys, here's the thing. 
you should have some experience of this by, you know, you guys constantly looking for someone's weakness. How can we control this person? How can we do this? How can we, you know, how can we get through to the, you know, how can we make this person do what we want? And you go around looking and you're looking for some sort of weakness. Does abuse work? Does do threats work? Does demonetization work? And you keep doing this, trying to figure out what will work. Well, if you can't find anything that works, you guys just run out of ideas and you don't know what to do, right? Well, guess what? People do that, can do that with you as well. They can learn what really makes you flip out. Your best bet in those situations when someone's doing the same to you, what works with these guys? What can I do to annoy these guys? Your best bet is to not let anyone know what makes you flip out. But you guys just let it all hang out there, right? We take it. We, you know, we take. We take a piece of the Quran and we go, "Huh? I wonder if this will work." Ah! It's the end of the world. We don't know what to do now. Ah! Guess what? Everyone who's watching goes, "Huh? If one of these guys ever messes with me, I know exactly what to do now." Guys, you got you get a good po get a good poker face. It's. I mean. Uh, it should be embarrassing. I don't know. I don't know. Oh gosh, I don't know what to do, man. I, I, man. I, I'm sick. I'm sick of trying to explain anything to them. Um, all right, let's check out some of these uh, super chats here. Oh, whoops. Let's see. That was very. That was very realistic, by the way. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to. You need to cut that. You need to make that a video because uh, that one's nice and shareable. Um, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> That's nice and shareable, but these guys, if you notice, they always like cut a part out and ignore and 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 destroy the context. So they'll yeah. take just me screaming and they'll act like you know Muhammad Hijab just refuted me and I'm oh I can't take it. And so they'll, they'll, they'll do it like that, right? <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. I have I have to agree though. This is fun. This is it's it's more it's more fun than than uh, you know just standard putting yeah. videos together, giving refutations and stuff. Yeah, uh, all right. Super chats. Mix cat calm. Didn't leave a comment, but thanks for the super chat. Thomas Garcia said, if a religion thinks by allowing homosexuality, men will stop having sex with women. There will be no more kids. Their religion will stop growing and die. Is this a slippery slope? Logical fallacy. Um, <coughs> yeah, that would that would that would be. Yeah, that would be a terrible. Uh, th that's a terrible argument. If you want to, if you yeah, want to, if you want to argue against something, then yes, uh, have a have a better argument than that. Uh, the conclusion doesn't follow at all. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is very ridiculous. It's entirely ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Cobb says, "Please read the book on what Earth is about to happen. Please read the book on. Oh, please read the book. What on Earth is about to happen for heaven's sake? Um, not on my reading list. Haven't heard of that." book before what on earth is about to happen uh david panther super sticker 6011 says love your vids keep up the good work yashiro cuff says good luck my brothers we are with you vegan love says i do not know where adam Saleh is from but wherever that place is it has a lot of lead in its drinking water that's, <laughs> that's, Stop that's it. not very nice <laughs> david panther 20 with the uh super super sticker Rodney Smith said, D, love you, bro. Idea for you. Need to raise up and equip apologists similar to CIA, but reproducing yourself, Sam, etc. Systematic training, perhaps in levels beginner to expert. Uh, by the way, Islamic ads on your vids. I know. Uh, and it's cool that Islamic ads run on my videos because that means the algorithm understands that Muslims are watching my videos, which is, uh, which is cool. So, um, uh, yes, we are going to be... We're going to be putting out lots of more systematic courses in the near future. Vegan Love says, what is wrong with these people? I just watched their posted videos that they are proud of. Wow, that was some lowbrow stuff. Disengage with them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the problem, Vegan Love, and this is, a, this is a problem that lots of, and AP can share his thoughts on this one too, as far as why respond to people like this, because AP, I've gotten tons of comments from Christians saying, why are you why are you dealing with these guys? Just stick with the arguments, stick with the arguments, right? And guys, you need to understand these are people who are influencing lots of people, right? It is a mistake to think, oh, 
Just focus on arguments and having the best arguments. If you're focused on having the best arguments and someone near you focuses on having the biggest mob that can kill you, guess who wins that argument? You guys, you guys understand? You understand the problem? You kind of have to deal with people who are influencing yep. massive yep. numbers of people. Um, any thoughts on that? Or well, I obviously think, um, especially after yesterday's move, you know, where he went out and actually uh, asked people to report us and to take us down. You know, will so... you help me? <laughs> <laughs> you too. I, I, I seriously asked myself, why do we take this person seriously? You know, why do we actually take this person seriously? This is what a baby. incredibly pathetic. It's so embarrassingly stupid. But then, as you said, this guy is uh, currently uh, a trending Muslim apologist. He's at the forefront of this. And people actually think that he's doing a good job. People think he's great. So I really genuinely wanted to have a debate with this guy just to... Uh, just to make a demonstration. I don't even know the outcome. I'm not going to stay here and, and say, hey, I will totally destroy him. I will totally crush him. No, I don't know the outcome. I have no idea about the outcome. And I said that before. Maybe he will uh, make a better performance than me. You know, maybe he's better than me. I don't know. I cannot know that. I'm not, I'm not going to brag about a possible outcome in the future. I'm not, I'm not that person. I just want to come together and have a debate with this... Uh, currently most popular Muslim apologist to demonstrate what his side is and what my side is in a, in a completely fair environment, in a debate where we both actually have to listen to each other and he has to defend that certain religion that he brags so much about and insults people for. And uh, the thing is, since I really wanted the debate to happen so much and it uh, went into completely the false, the, the wrong direction and he started becoming very uh, dirty, I am now basically just uh, going in this back and forth with him to demonstrate to people how awful their best representatives are. And uh, I want to press them into seriously looking at the difference between us and them. And I still wanted to come down to, uh, to comparing my worldview and their worldview or comparing our arguments and their arguments. Unfortunately, they are not as honest as I am or as you are about these things. They rather want to... Uh, take take excerpts or trick us into conversations and then not answer our questions and just make joke videos in response. But I seriously just want to use this opportunity to 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 sit there and to speak with the most popular person that they have. I don't choose that guy. I speak with him because he is so popular, and I want to see the outcome of that myself. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, Vegan love said, "Holler, at your boy." Uh, KG Chaplin said, give them more Jesus. Yep, that is what they need. Uh, Angelique News said, while you've been speaking, Dr. David Wood, you've got three more patrons. Yeah, it just keeps going up. Hijab is, <laughs> hijab is an endless source of funding, <laughs> of funding for, Islam for Islamophobes. <clears throat> uh, Here are some recent, recent comments on my... Uh... Just a few comments on my Quran ripping video, by the way. I swear I, I will kill you without touching you. If you still do like that, if you break, you will know the consequences. I've no idea. This is very strange language. I, if I find you, I will kill you. Be a dumb uh, whatever, full of <laughs> insults. Uh, half English comes from Indonesia. That's very nice. You can go on my on my Quran ripping video and can find a lot of good stuff in the comment section right now. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Daniel Harp is saying, I got a new entry in Wikipedia about eating the crown. That's cool. I've never actually read my Wikipedia page, but uh, looks like I am now in there for eating the Quran. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, Kathy M. Quillen um, left super sticker. Michael Jarek said, where's the new Boom Boom Room featuring Ali Dawa and Mr. Hijab? That would be funny. That would be funny if we get some people to play both of them and maybe maybe Muhammad's ordering them to protect the Quran and they refuse it because of their own pride and arrogance, which is basically what they're actually doing right now. Uh, Jonathan Maciel said, um, I don't want to read that one. That could be construed as hate speech, and we know they're coming after us for hate speech now. Juanish M said, Sir, AP off topic, but would you mind considering to study Bible with open mind, without any preconceived opinion? Beg you this in the name of Jesus. So, AP, what do you think? 
Uh, I actually did decide to do that before, after, mm. as I was leaving Islam, after I left Islam, and also long after that, actually quite recently, I did intend to do that. I uh, I didn't ever read it through the way that I read through the Quran. I read through the Quran from beginning to end several times and still continuously read it through. For With the Bible, I usually just look up references. I read some chapters fully. I basically know... Uh, basic knowledge about the, about, the, about the different parts of it, but I have never actually sat down and made a uh, the same research that I did with the, with the Quran on it. I would do that. It's it, just... It, 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 is, it, is a, it is a bit different in that there's actually a beginning and end to the Bible. Yeah. Whereas the Quran's just like, <laughs> it's like, hey, let's toss, let's toss a bunch of stories in a blender and see what pops out. And oh, there you go. That's the, uh, yeah. that's the order. <laughs> it's definitely easier to follow the... To follow the the narrative of the Bible, because yeah, as you said, it actually has a beginning and the end. And end, you 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 know what you're reading, whenever whichever book you read and whichever uh, chapter you open. Mm -hmm. uh, so it actually it actually it actually flows. Yeah, uh, but I've never had the time to if go the, through all of it at once. If the Quran is the eternal speech of Allah, it's uh, just a little confused in his thinking. Allah is, Allah is a very strange speaker, if that's his eternal speech. <laughs> Michael Jarek said, thanks, David Wood and AP. Jordan Amick said, love your work. Allah should take communication lessons. Alicia Henderson says, in honor of the awesome mods who are working so hard tonight and every night. Yeah, that's, uh, yep, we have, uh, we have cool mods. Uh, Michael Coyne and Joseph Bastian with the super stickers. Kevin Kondracki uh, didn't leave a comment, but thanks for the super chat. Jared Ricker says, except <laughs> Jared Ricker said, accept this super chat on behalf of Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for the super chat on behalf of Muhammad Hijab. Thank you, Muhammad <laughs> Hijab, for you. inspiring that man, for inspiring Jared Ricker to give us the super chat. <laughs> Nick, Nicodemus says you've peed off a lot of Muslims. Use wisdom and pray. God won't let them. Uh, God won't let them near you. I pray. Um, Psalm ninety-one. So, um, yeah, Nicodemus. I have to say, yeah, I, under, I understand the risks when I, I'm doing what I do, but yeah, someone's got to do it. Juanesh said, um, Sir AP, Sir, Sir. AP. I request you to be well prepared anytime for hijab kind of people and kindly refute the recent video. Massive respect uh, from India. Thank you so much. Um, very honestly, I didn't, um, I feel like after the conversation was done, I felt like um, I should have, I should have never gone on with the conversation because that's all they wanted from me. When Muhammad Hijab appeared, I should have just said, hey, Nope, we're not doing this. We are. Uh, I'm still waiting for a debate. We are supposed to have a debate together where we can both, in a fair, proper environment, share our ideas and listen to each other. Because obviously, this doesn't work because you keep speaking over me all the time. And while whatever I say, you give a dumb response and say, "Oh, look, you have been refuted." So I th maybe that would have been wiser to do. But to be very honest, I was very mad at the way that he. Uh, treated people, and that, that and, and that and that people seriously had no issue with that, and that this guy was suddenly sitting there in front of me after telling me for a, for a, for, a, for an entire month that he refuses to have an online debate with me. I was mad, so I uh, said thanks to him and yelled at him. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I, 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 I will take Mohammed Hijab's advice, who himself who himself told me that I shouldn't trust him. <laughs> Very crazy. Yeah, the, the hijab strategy. Uh, check it out. I will never face you. I will never do it. Whatever. Okay, you're here for an interview. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Where'd you come from? <laughs> Be strong! Um, <laughs> Sophia Agape said, Nice job, Muhammad Hijab, with gratitude for your efforts in destroying Islam 2020. Seriously, who's done more damage? To Islam this year than Muhammad Hijab. Uh, Seriously, we should, we should make a breakdown of, of, of everything that Muhammad Hijab did every month. <laughs> and, and and he's just getting the year's not over, right? He's still going. He's still let me try this, let me try that, and he's like got the dumbest plans ever, and he's still trying to come up with plans instead of actually just taking taking down the tweets. 
Um, what is, what is said Muhammad Hijab is in the chat. Say hi guys. Uh, I think that was, a, I saw someone named Muhammad Hijab uh, oh, earlier, but that, yeah, that's fake. If it doesn't have the check mark by it. Um, yeah. Muhammad Hijab gets the check marks. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we can't because you know we criticize Islam and you can't get a check mark you can't get you know you don't get the silver play button you don't get any of that stuff <clears throat> um, Rakesh left a super sticker Jesus is the only way says God loves Muslims repent Jesus is Lord Dragonfist 900 says long ago Islam and the West existed in harmony then everything changed when hijab attacked <laughs> 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 that, that notice that that's true to an extent right I, I keep mentioning we had a kind of equilibrium right and it's understood yeah. guys your prophet calls for our violent subjugation obviously we get to respond and guess what when we when we respond to that and we bring up criticisms if you don't like something we say you can refute it you can mock it you can make fun of us you can do all that stuff guess what we're, we're, we're all cool with that and then you have this uh super genius brilliant tactician Muhammad Hijab I know uh, golden showers oh we'll just talk about golden showers oh it's not working them now calling me Muhammad golden showers hijab me no like this oh me attack the wives oh everyone whore 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 oh, right oh no now they no now them eat Quran oh me no me no know what to do oh right he doesn't know to do. And, and so yeah he he threw off he threw off the harmony that we had developed and uh same, same. question question is you know guys you want to go back to the harmony because i'd love to get back to just making videos but if you want to go this route it is kind of fun yeah christy robinson with super sticker uh moheb abdullah said love the content dragon fist 900 says nabil versus hijab debate who wins um that depends if if hijab's de, if hijab's debate tricks that he uses were known ahead of time were known ahead of time then nabil wouldn't fall for them and nabil would uh crush him if nabil was one of the first people to debate him and hijab was using the stunts he could actually throw throw someone off of that it, do, it does work right you uh you start breaking rules and stuff like that you you it, it does work it's just it's short-term gain long-term loss because you know after oh you can't keep using that tactic because people don't trust you anymore and they're not going to make agreements with you and they view you as as a garbage person it's like zucker knight zucker knight's debate tricks wouldn't work anymore right that's why he debated like two or three people 20 years ago and then never faced anyone again he knows he knows any christian debater would would mop the floor now that they know what he does um if, seriously if you if you need to carefully craft um fallacies and tricks in order to uh come out superior from a debate then uh, what, what does that say about you yeah you know, if, if 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 as opposed to going into a debate and simply plainly speaking your ideas and presenting your ideas and uh letting them race against the ideas of your opponents instead of that you go into it carefully preparing so many fallacies and tricks and boasting and bragging and playing to the audience and yelling and insulting people then that that just means that you don't really trust your own your your, your actual ideas you know you trust your your other skills your deceptions your terrible personality but you don't trust your ideas and that kind of explains a lot about him and his followers yeah um actually uh i'm i wanted to go through all these uh super chats it looks like it will take a while because there were there were a bunch of them um mm. so we'll go we'll go through a few more and then we'll wrap it up um <clears throat> hayden tang says i wasn't gonna join dizzle's patreon for a while but now i'm gonna be a patron for both david and ap thank you hayden and uh we'll thank be, you so much we'll be i'll be posting a video update on that in another uh in another couple days on nice video on how hijab's plot turned out again it's it's always possible that it'll work it'll it's always possible that patreon will shut us down they've done that to, to channels in the past but um if they don't it's just hilarious it's just a, it's a hilarious fail that people think we're just doing this for money give us a bunch of extra money <clears throat> um dragon fist 900 says hey david praying for you and your family buddy thank you yes 
All the prayers. Thank you. Jason Lippert says uh, this well, donation. Why not, why not me? Because uh, you're a dirty atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say that? You said in a comment once, I'm an immoral atheist. As an immoral <laughs> atheist. Yeah, immoral atheist. Yeah. Jason <laughs> Jason Lippert says, this donation brought to you by Muhammad Hijab. Oh, and it, yeah, he also left one. Uh, I also got one from uh, Ali Dawa. Uh, <laughs> so people donating in the name of Muhammad Hijab and in Ali Dawa. Uh, Rob Sanders said, love it. Uh, uh, keep it up, guys. Love it. Stefan says, Slim... Do you know how to pronounce his name? Alba 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 Hair. Al Alba Hair, yeah. Alba Something Slim like. Alba Hair have six hundred thousand subs, looking like a complete joke and can barely talk. And somebody cries, "I'm unable to find girl or boyfriend. It's your fault." Th that guy, I <laughs> I want I want to keep that joke for uh, for my video, but um, I don't know how much how much you have seen of that of that conversation between me and Mohammed Hijab, but Adam Saleh and, and Slim they were just there they were they, like the entire time they were just you know, <laughs> and, and whatever Mohammed Hijab says they they're laughing and agreeing with him and whenever I say something Mohammed Hijab is like oh and, and they go like oh and they have no clue what we're even talking about like yeah. they probably didn't understand like ninety percent ninety five percent of what we're talking about but that was like to me the representation of Mohammed Hijab's followers just this this guy sitting there completely clueless nothing in his head but it's just uh <laughs> you know agreeing and disagreeing yeah it's a, well, I mean what's interesting is that group they're bad people right I bet I bet I bet lots of Muslims in my life who were really really awesome nice generous kind people um the ones like Adam Saleh and his buddy Slim, I mean, Adam Saleh, I mean, uh, he's the one who, he's the guy who um, made this video claiming that he was harassed for being a Muslim. Him and his, him and a friend were yeah. harassed simply for being dressed as Muslims by the NYPD. CARE got involved and demanded an investigation. Then it turns out it was totally fake. And then they said, oh, this is just a reenactment to illustrate what happens to us. It's like, well, you guys walk around with cameras all the time. You never record the actual harassment, so you have to reenact it, which you posted as a true story until it got exposed as fake. So th then you have, you know, when they were yelling om talela om on the Delta plane, and then they get kicked off because they're scaring everyone by jumping up, yelling stuff and disrupting, disrupting everything. So they get kicked off, and then they say it's just because we're it's just because we're we're speaking Arabic and so on. They weren't even speaking Arabic, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Th these are terrible, terrible people. And is these, it these guys actually want to ruin other people's lives in order yeah. to get some clicks on YouTube? This is yeah. <clears throat> and so, I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that these guys are drawn to the the people like Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa because mm -hmm. they're horrible people as well. And what's amazing is just how popular this can become if i did something like that if i pulled a stunt like that if i set up let's say i set up muslims right i i pretended that i'm the victim of an attack by muslims just to make muslims look bad and then i get exposed as a liar guys i'd, I'd be done the apostate <laughs> prophet would be done we'd be over because atheists Finish. and christians would no longer trust us for some reason these guys can do it over and over and over and over, accusing people, just making things up, accusing everyone of, of, of hating them because they're Muslim and so on, and trying to destroy people's lives. And it's no problem in their community. It's just totally fine. Lying, trying to ruin people's it's just perfectly fine for them. And they, yeah. could just, they could be every bit as popular after they do something like that. It's amazing stuff, man. But don't, don't rip the Quran, because that would be bad. <laughs> Um, here's actually uh, here's a comment from Nim Grace. Nim Grace said, "Is Hijab aware that if his derogatory tweets are taken down, you will stop abusing his novel?" Yes, he's 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 clearly watched a number of the videos I posted, and I've I've told him that over and over and over again. He doesn't want to because, I mean, think about the situation he's in, right? And he got himself in this situation. But if he doesn't take the tweets down, I keep blasting away at and desecrating the Quran. If he does take them down, then guess what? He just backed down from a Christian who, I mean, they're obsessed with controlling other people. If I say, now you do this, I order you to do this, and then he does it, well, guess what? Who's, oh, 
me no strong, David strong. Oh, me no do that. Oh. <laughs> so he's stuck in this position where he's supposed to take David. I love the person. Uh, he's actually ordered. Nim Grace, he's ordered in the Quran. Surah 6, verse 108. It's a little confusing if you read it, but if you read the historical background, the, the Muslims had been insulting the pagans, and the pagans got sick of it. And finally they said, if you don't stop insulting our, our gods and goddesses, we're going to insult Allah. And Allah's response is, whoa, if they're going to insult you, if they're going to insult your gods, stop with the insults. Right, so here we are with Muhammad Ajab. He's uh, me, me go after your wives, uh. and I say, okay, well, we're actually going to start desecrating your book. According to the Quran, he's supposed to say, whoa, sorry, 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 take it back. What do you want me to do? You want me to take it down? Okay, I'm, I'm taking the tweets down. I'm taking the insults down. He's supposed to do that. He's refusing because uh, me strong. So that's why that's why it's a conflict between his religion and his pride. His pride wants him to do one thing. His religion demands that he does something else, and so. People are actually seeing. Yeah, people. People are actually seeing his uh, his arrogance outweighs his religion. And uh, we'll read one more comment here. Legendary ostrich says, "What are your thoughts on Dr. James White? He saw your vid where you ate the Quran, and he came out denouncing it. He says that's not how you engage in apologetics. Well, I, I would agree that's not how you engage in apologetics, but that had nothing to do with apologetics, right? Um, just to explain, <laughs> legendary ostrich, if a uh, if uh, if Osama bin Laden were coming to blow up an orphanage and you shot him, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to say, well, you shot, you shot Osama bin Laden. That's not good apologetics. You're not doing apologetics there. <laughs> that was not, a, that was not, a, it's, it's a mistake to think that the only possible interaction you can have with anyone is apologetics or evangelism. Which one is it? Is it apologetics or evangelism? Those are the only two, those are the only two interactions you could possibly have. That's false. Sometimes you have people who are crossing lines and someone needs to stop them, right? Someone needs to stop them because, you know, everyone understands this if it's a terrorist or something like that. What if it's someone who says, hey, I am I have massive popularity. I'm influencing the next generation. And you know what I'm going to influence them to do? I'm going to influence them to harass women with threats of rape and torture. And I'm teaching a generation to do that. Does there ever come a, does there ever come a point for the Christian to say, Actually, no, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to stop you because your book gives me a way of stopping you, of making you stop. And keep in mind, Hijab already did stop. He immediately stopped. As soon as we went, oh, I'm going to eat the Quran, he stopped. He started doing other things, whining, coming after us, but he stopped going after women, right? Why? He understands he's required to. Um, but he doesn't want to take down the tweets because that's going to be too much of a hit to his pride. And so I'm going to make him. And guess what? If Christians want to say, no, you mustn't do that. What I'm, at, what I'm hearing is, no, if people are heaping abuse on your wife, on women, and they're starting a campaign of abuse, given the, especially given the history of this religion, and its impact on women in the, in the Muslim world and the grooming gangs, the rape gangs, all of this stuff. If you know the impact and how this religion views women and the impact it has on women, um, once, they start, once they start deciding, you know what we need? We need more abuse of women. If your response is, well, no, as a Christian, we can't put a stop to that. Well, let's just say I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. What are your thoughts, AP? Well, I won't. I won't be able to speak about. I mean, who am I to speak about uh, a matter of Christian apologetics? But uh, I, mean, I would say it's quite obvious that your reaction to what Muhammad Hijab is doing is more a personal response because it has gotten to a personal level. Then it is a response on a level of interfaith, uh, you know, politics or apologetics or whatever you want to call it. So. I don't think it's. I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Um, if if this guy, as you said, comes with such dirty tactics, such dirty strategies against you and others personally, then there must be a way to personally counter that and make him stop. And we're doing we're doing the least that we could do. I don't want to sound like Adnan Rashid now, who says the least you can do is to report people. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what, what what is the worst thing? But uh, but yeah, this is the least that we can do. It we're we're really we're really doing 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 the least. There, are, this is this is this is nothing. This is a language that they that they understand, and um, it is personal. It is very much personal. And mm -hmm. I don't know to to those opinions uh, of people 
who think you cannot change the minds of Muslims by being uh, provocative, I would really ask them to have a conversation with me about that. Yeah. Um, and so here, here's what I don't get. You know, I don't run around telling other people, hey, here's how you need to do things. Right. I understand there are different kinds of people yeah. and there are different methods for different, uh, you know, different things going on in the world. What I don't get is uh, I, I do understand why someone would say, well, I don't want to take a bite out of that Quran. But if someone says, hey, here's what they're about to start. And the, the only real way of dealing with this is to do something that strikes at their religion because that's what the Quran commands them. There's one scenario where the Quran will command them to stop. That's Surah 6, verse 108. But you have to blast away at their religion with something that is very degrading and insulting to it. And that will actually force them to stop. Do you do it? I understand someone saying no, and I don't believe most people should. <laughs> I believe I should because I'm the sort of person who's kind of made for that. Um, and you know what? What I would think, and I think this is how lots of Christians are. Lots, I think lots of Christians are. Gosh, I would never do that, but I'm glad there's someone to do that. Um, I mm -hmm. think lots of Christians understand. <clears throat> think lots of Christians understand. Sometimes it's good to have a psycho on your side to deal with certain people. That sounds like a catchphrase right there, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to have a psycho on your side. <laughs> you, should, you should end your videos with that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, someone someone pointed out and said uh, James White um, called Yasser Kadi his friend and invited him to his church or something like that. I don't know if it, if that is supposed to be critical, and I don't know if that's supposed to be a criticism mm -hmm. of his. Christian attitude, but I would say on a on a personal attitude, on an interpersonal uh, uh, perspective, I don't I wouldn't think that there's anything wrong with necessarily with doing that alone, with calling someone a friend, no matter uh, if you think that his beliefs are very, you know, yeah, uh, are, are yeah, not, the, not proper. So basically, a few years ago, um, James White had this scenario where if he gets to go, um, I think it's. I think the scenario was he gets to question Yasser Qadi in a church and Yasser Qadi will get to question him in a mosque. And so people were, people were pointing out that, wait a minute, you just let Yasser Qadi spout a bunch of complete nonsense about Islam in a church that was misleading tons of people and there's no response from, from you. And the, the response is, yeah, but then I get to go and preach the gospel in a mosque. And uh, notice, ladies and gentlemen, there were lots of people who criticized this. And the criticism was that Muslims are kind of pretty inoculated to it in that no matter how clearly you're explaining it, they're not getting it. Whereas your Christian audience, they don't, a lot of them don't know what to believe about Islam being violent or something like that. And so when they're getting answers from Yasser Qadi, oh, cool, well, this has the stamp of approval. So that's kind of the criticism. Notice, guys, I didn't come out and criticize it. I didn't. I didn't condemn that. I didn't freak out about that. Why? Well, I don't know. Maybe you have. Maybe you have some some different goals from what I have, and maybe there's a maybe there's an important uh, important place for that. So I didn't say yeah. much about that. But gosh, how much time does you know do the James Whites of this world spend blasting away at everyone? Else? Everyone's doing it wrong. Everyone's doing it wrong. Everyone should do it like me. Um, anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, 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 for that to reach 1 million views. And it is currently at 963,000 views. And That's I thought, gotta hurt. Awesome. I thought, awesome, this is going to be my most watched video. It's actually <laughs> pretty, pretty good. And now see what is happening. I'm ripping apart the Quran and that video has currently 950,000 views. And that is going to be the first video to reach 1 million views. And it's also going to be my most watched video. I made so many videos that I, mm -hmm. that, that I carefully wrote and carefully recorded and produced for, uh, for, 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 for so much time, 
carefully crafted and put together and thought, okay, this is going to be good. And I really wanted those to be watched and to spread. And I wanted people to be informed by that. And here I rip apart the Quran and this is going to be the most watched video within five days. <laughs> and, yeah, and and that is, uh, I agree, that is hilarious. I mean, who to thunk it? We spend years, it we spend years carefully crafting arguments, putting together videos. Sometimes the videos take days, weeks, months even. I had videos that I spent years on, not, not that I spent entire years working on them, but that I, you know, it eh, doesn't I don't think I've gotten this right yet and so I just you know keep keep yeah. tweaking keep tweaking the argument and so on for 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 years even doing that and as it turns out all you had to do was start ripping up the Quran that's how you get view. I mean think <laughs> I mean it was so why were we putting all of this brain power into this when all we had to do and oh yeah you guys see this brand new brand new <laughs> still in the plastic still in the plastic why well <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need some new ones. So right now it is the time to please go and watch my video, The Truth About the Kaaba, and make sure that that video reaches 1 million views and that video is the most watched video, not the Quran ripping video because that's that's not how it was supposed to happen. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. Although I have to say as a as a professional uh attention seeker who uh who also, you know, who wants to just uh, attract attention by speaking against Islam, although and, I and get rich, and get rich, although I know that Islam is the truth, which is why I'm also scared. Deep down, you know it, but you sold it for a small price. Yeah, yeah, for a small price. Uh, it satisfies me that I also that one of my that 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 I suddenly get this attention by making a little stunt, and that this goes viral, although it's not monetized. Stupid me. The video is not monetized, but it's, it's getting 1 million views in five days. As a professional attention seeker, I'm really enjoying the attention because the attention means uh, business, which means thrill, which means business, which means attention, which means business and thrill, which means attention and thrill and business, mm -hmm. which I, as, a, as, as, which I as, a, as an Islamophobe who, is, who makes a whole career and who has nothing better in his life to do than to be an Islamophobe. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. It's pretty good. It's the most pathetic it, thing I've ever seen. It is, but there's just nothing I can do. You know, I don't have any better qualities. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not creative. I'm not loser. Good. I'm not good at anything else. I don't have muscles. I don't have big muscles. I can't intimidate people. Look, I can't intimidate anybody. I cannot do anything else. I cannot do anything good with my life. And this you know, strong. You know, I'm not strong. You know, strong than me. I'm your teacher, boy. Me strong than you. <laughs> Yeah, I snorted. Okay, I guess that's it. All right, everyone. Um, I guess we'll be having some videos coming out soon. Not sure when I'll be live again, although I am uh, planning to go live with uh, Harris Sultan here uh, pretty soon. And then Bob... Harris Sultan? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yep. We've got some stuff to talk about. Yeah. And, I just don't. Uh, I just don't like it when other ex-Muslims beside me get attention. Yeah, I know you like all the attention yourself, and yeah, you think he's yeah. gonna he's gonna take all your money that you're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It diverts the attention from me, and I, I just I just can't, don't can't handle it on a personal basis. I don't tell them that. I don't go and tell those other ex-Muslims, for example, Abdullah Samir. I hate the fact that he's that his videos are being watched, while my videos are around. But I don't. I, I want to tell him that, but I don't want to make it public. But yeah, I said it here. All right, everyone. Thanks By the way, Abdullah Samir has very great videos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will catch you next time. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, I mean, I can't actually, I mean, on, on the one hand, I think hopefully his job just takes his tweets down so we don't have to continue and we can get back to doing things we would rather be doing, but I don't know <laughs> if he wants to, if he wants to keep on, uh, you know, supporting us and supporting our work and helping us get funding through his tantrums then he can he can do that too so it's basically as as weird as hijab is we've got we've got a lot that we've placed in his hands as far as he's deciding what we're going to be doing here uh in the near future as far as our content <laughs> what are you laughing at what'd you see <laughs> Who is this? Is this person watching the live stream right now? 
<laughs> I don't want to give away the name because it doesn't. He didn't say anything about the. the <laughs> <laughs> can you see this? Wait. Uh, can you see this? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> hey, I just got this out of nowhere by a fan. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting requests for a video of, about Dawood Kim. You posted on that, didn't you? Yeah, I posted about him recently. I made, I made a video about whether he uh, understands Islam or not, and. <laughs> Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean that, but uh, imme immediately after I did that, uh, Dawood Kim came out as having sexually assaulted a a woman, and it's, 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 it sucks effect. because because my uh, but this uh, this screen is on a delay, so I see the picture of Muhammad Hijab, and I'm I it's funny, and then but you're talking about sexual assault, and so I shouldn't be smiling, but <laughs> there, was, there was the picture of Hijab there, and so it I looks know, like it looks like I'm being such a jerk. Well, what's he doing smiling when when <laughs> AP's talking about sexual assault? What's wrong with him? Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, looking yeah. at I was looking at the picture of Hijab in a in a Hijab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wow, man, man, man. But yeah, the uh, the Dawood Kim situation is that I made a video about him. Yeah, about how because people have been asking me a lot about like who is this guy who is converted to Islam, and I looked a little bit into it and I made a video called "Does Dawood Kim Understand Islam?" and just pointed out how. You know, when people leave Islam and uh, talk about why they left Islam, we always get these accusations of like, you didn't understand Islam, you were never a real Muslim to begin with, and all, all, all that stuff. But I looked at Dawood Kim, for example, and the guy has no clue about um, basic Islamic knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it looks like his conversion basically resulted from him becoming popular among Muslim girls that he hung out with, and he continued to hang out with them. And uh, I didn't say much about him. I just kind of uh, talked about how he doesn't seem to know much about Islam. And he kind of seems to think that Islam has these Christian sentiments of like God is with you and uh, God loves you and all that stuff. Uh, but 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 it coincided with me making a video about him just in the same week, a victim who was apparently sexually assaulted by Dawood Kim a year ago or so uh, made this sexual assault allegation public. And then Dawood Kim made a video about it in which he admitted to having done that. And today, he I think he deleted all his videos on his YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and he publicly admitted that he uh, that he did continue to drink alcohol and go to clubs and hang out with girls after he converted to Islam and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if he really said that, but I think that's what he said. I briefly looked at the video. So mm -hmm. there's lots of stuff going on right now. Yeah, that's... Uh... I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw, but Adam Saleh. So he got in trouble on TikTok, and, and really, I'm not interested in this stuff. But people keep send people people keep sending me stuff, right? People keep sending me stuff. Hey, will you comment on this? And it's eh, I'm not going to make a video out of it. Yeah. Um, but Adam Saleh. So he got in trouble for kissing a girl on TikTok, and then he has this you know intervention where Ali Dawa intervenes, and then he he comes back to you know, calling for the deaths of apostates and stuff and becomes really orthodox. Well, uh, someone sent me a, a video clip uh, from the girl who said basically it's all, the intervention's kind of all staged as part of his plan because he doesn't want to lose his yeah. follow. He doesn't want to lose yeah. his Muslim following. So once he realized he was in trouble over that, then it has to be this repentance thing where he's brought back and then everyone's all happy again and he doesn't lose his, his millions of, uh, of followers. So yeah, that's what she yeah. said. Yeah, I saw that that person even came out in support of me against them, and that was very strange because I think they're Muslims. I don't, I don't know, but something uh, something happened there, and they're they're basically uh, accusing Adam Saleh of just making a public stunt, a show right now to appease his Muslim followers, and that he actually uh, is annoyed by the fact that his Muslim followers are complaining about everything that he does. Yep. And I don't know, weird drama, but, um, <clears throat> I want to say one thing quickly. Somebody said, uh, super chat, apostate prophet, please make a video clearing your stance that this was said by a gentleman said, please make a video clearing your stance on incest. <laughs> there is a mass misinformation about hey, you on that. Hey, wh <laughs> hey, why don't we actually have a conversation on that? <laughs> <laughs> not right not not right now <laughs> we, can, we can actually because uh 
it's interesting, guys. When when I was an atheist, I, be, I believe that all talk of morality and so on was just complete nonsense for weak-minded people and so on. So uh -huh. you can basically come to all sorts of positions, right? There are all sorts of views that you could take in terms of, um, you know, what you say is right and wrong in terms of what justification you present for saying that something is, is right and, and wrong. And, and uh, you know, there are issues of, one, how do you know that something is right or wrong? And two, then how do you kind of justify that? What's the basis for this this sort of thing being being right and wrong? And yeah, you might want to have a discussion on that at some point because that's what well, the thing that's is, what they're uh, using to blast you. Yeah, they're taking something out of context that I did like two years ago. I had a conversation with uh, Armin Navabi on my channel mm -hmm. with him, and, you and we were talking you, about you promoted incest on there. <laughs> Stop it! It's pretty disgusting. And... <laughs> No, we were talking about uh, about laws on cousin marriages, and he he he, br he brought up uh, incest laws in America, mm -hmm. and we were talking about that, about the specific situation, and he was talking about how, uh, you know, whether we can logically uh, justify banning a consensual relationship between two individuals who are above a certain age and who cannot reproduce. Well, first, we were talking about cousins and so on. So we went into this discussion and we were going through things. And, and, and the, one of the premises was that we cannot logically uh, explain why one case alone, which is that two uh, you know, individuals who cannot procreate have uh, you know sexual intercourse, for example, that, that that they unite in a way. That was what this discussion was about. But the conclusion was not that it is okay or good, or that incest should therefore be allowed, or that there is nothing wrong with incest. So they completely you know removed the context, took a little clip out of this, posted it. Even Mohammed Hijab used this and posted it on his on his on his channel. And they make it look like I am somebody who approves of uh, incestuous relationships and even promotes them. When e even in the clip, all I'm saying is uh, there is nothing wrong with that about that one situation, which even does not mean that I think there is nothing wrong with that specific situation. Mm -hmm. And um, so they completely took it out of context. Of course, I would sit down and clarify that now. But I keep thinking to myself, do I really want to give in and talk about that stuff that was a casual conversation i don't even think that way about this situation anymore because uh, much has developed that my my whole um outlook on morality has changed since then but do i really want to you know uh, do i really want to take the the bait and really talk about that stuff right now but some people tell ask me that i should maybe clarify that because mm -hmm. they keep using this but i know that even if i sit down and clarify the situation keep using even if i close if, if even if i make my stance clear this they will just use this to renew their stupid accusations they won't listen to my clarification at all mm -hmm. i know that so you know well well you heard it here folks the apostate prophet promotes incest <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have a my moral perspective depends is very much very much it goes close to a utilitarian mm -hmm. world so following the harm principle and uh, I, we, I, could, I could talk about it endlessly if we want to go into that we would have a long long we shall be we shall be having some discussions on morality yeah. here yeah yeah in the yeah. Near future all <clears throat> right I believe yeah we've been going for two and a half hours now but hey What's very up? clearly to everybody who has a question about this and who wants a very quick answer, no, I don't think incest is okay at all. And that's I don't think it be that's <laughs> that's exactly what we would expect someone who secretly supports incest to say. <laughs> See, th that would their response actually. Be. <laughs> <laughs> We've got him. <laughs> We've got him. Now we can ignore all of his refutations of Islam because we can attack him for this. Ha ha, me strong. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, what an ideology, man. <laughs> you have so you have you have overlooked all those things that I've talked about and you come after some personal thing that is completely unrelated that you think I have said somewhere in some random conversation two years ago. This is how their debate form works. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got videos coming up. Not sure when I'll be live again, but should be here pretty soon. Catch you all next time, and I'm sure we'll be talking a little bit about Muhammad Hijab, a little bit about, a little bit about Ali Dawa, a little bit of this. Gonna have a little bit of this. 
<laughs> becoming a lot of this until Muhammad Hijab decides to be a good Muslim and take down some tweets. We'll see what happens. And we never know what will happen in the meantime. They always surprise us. But we know he's going to support our ministries. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to support our work and our channels. And for that, Muhammad Hijab, we thank you okay. and salute you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And stay away from Islam.